Hi everyone. Welcome to this episode of The Role of Play, in which we are going to be exploring Dante's Inferno. Uh, <laughs> I, got, I got a little bit of echo there for a second. Um, so Dante's Inferno is a work of poetry written by Dante, Al I'm going to butcher his last name, Alighieri. That's how I've always said it, but that could be very wrong. Um, in 1500s, very long time ago. Um, very influential work, and we are going to be playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons, 5th edition. Uh, and we have some characters here who are going to walk through it, but before that I will introduce myself. I am Jonathan Bradley. I am Head of Studios Innovative Technologies at the University Libraries. I use he, him pronouns, and I will be the Game Master for this session. Uh, so I'll, before we start, I will let our players introduce themselves and the characters they're going to be playing, and then we will jump in. And we will start with Anthony. Sure. I'm Anthony Wright Day Hernandez. Uh, he, they pronouns. Uh, I am the Community Collections Archivist at Virginia Tech, and I'm on this channel on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Uh, for a show called Archival Adventures. Um, I'm playing uh, Hibernos. Uh, he, him pronouns uh, Goliath wizard who was raised by elves. Nice. Uh, next we will go with Kira. Sure. My name is Kira Dietz. I'm the assistant director of special collections and university archives. Uh, sometimes often on this channel playing games, GMing games. Uh, and tonight I will be playing Reyna Dusk Arrow. She is a half drow, half human uh, cleric of the knowledge domain. Excellent. Uh, next we have Alice. Hi everyone, my name is Alice Rogers, I use she, her pronouns, and I am manager of the media design studios here at Virginia Tech. Uh, I do all kinds of funky stuff behind the scenes with technology, as do many other people here. Um, today I'm going to be playing uh, Athene Weatherby, uh, she, her pronouns, a halfling paladin, uh, oath of the ancients. Uh, yeah. Great. And finally, Griffin. Hello, I'm Griffin Nock. I am a student worker at the studios at the Virginia Tech Libraries, and I use he, him pronouns. And today I'll be playing Voyage, a uh, warforged artificer, battlesmith specifically, I'm pretty sure, um, who's a, you know, they, them, warforged. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, excellent. I'm very excited about this. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, before we jump in, does anybody have any questions? Why are we going to Are hell? we all going to die? <laughs> <laughs> all the questions at once, specifically. <laughs> I heard... And those are technically related questions. <laughs> are we all going to die? Um, yeah. I mean, up to y'all. <laughs> really. Uh, and mm. why, was it why are we going to hell? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're about to find out. Here it comes. Uh, so... You are all adventurers in the service of Agma, a deity of knowledge and travel. In your service, you act as part of a group known as the Companions of the Silver String, who carry out tasks on behalf of Agma. One day, the four of you receive a missive from one of Agma's avatars, giving you a grave task to complete. It states, A scholar and traveler that is important to me has become stranded in the Nine Hells, though the time of his death has not yet come upon him. Something is preventing him from being able to use magic to leave, suggesting some nefarious actor wants to keep him there. He is in grave danger, and at the moment, the only escape for him seems to be physically passing through the layers of the Nine Hells and exiting into the Astral Sea, where we can retrieve him properly. I implore you, brave adventurers, go to the Nine Hells and guide Bolo Thamp Gedard back to the world of the living. You accept your deity's mission, ready to prove your bravery and dedication to the pursuit of knowledge. You take some time to prepare for the trip, gathering supplies, armor, and weapons before returning to speak with Ogma's avatar, who provides you with a map. She explains that the nine hells, each layer is infinite, and travel through them is complicated and ever-shifting. This map, a gift from Ogma himself, will adapt and provide you with paths and shortcuts to get you through whenever possible. He also provides you with an amulet and explains that it will take you to Volo, but it will likely not function once you've arrived. 
Whatever is attempting to keep Volo in the Nine Hells will almost assuredly block it and any other magic that may, would make for a hasty escape. You will need to lead yourselves and him out of the Nine Hells, and once you've entered the Astral Sea, activate the amulet to return all of you to the Prime Material Plane. You st all steel yourselves against what is coming and activate the amulet. The place you find yourself in, though, is not necessarily what you expect. You arrive in a bleak, dark valley. You walk for a brief period of time before hearing a commotion up ahead. Ducked behind a large boulder and cowering is a portly man in fine dress with a full beard and ascot wrapped around his neck. On the ground beside him is a collection of bound parchment and a quill. Nearby, climbing the boulder and menacing the edges of the man's hiding place with its mouths and claws is a chimera, with the head of a lion, a wolf, and a dragon, snapping and breathing fire furiously. What do you do? By the way, I didn't mention this before. They've all been asked to make level 9 characters <laughs> for this adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the audience how much. Right. Just, <laughs> what just, you're gonna uh, put us yeah, through. well, just so they know like where you're at with what spells and stuff they can expect you coming from you. But yeah, what do y'all do? There's this uh, chimera. It looks a little strange. Doesn't necessarily have the the normal heads, and it is it is trying to get at this man who has ducked behind this boulder for cover and is uh, sort of frantically pulling back every little limb and um, piece of uh, exposed. Um, limb that could be grabbed or clawed or bitten uh athene who is probably riding on her steed orion a blank dog says stop fiend you must stop and jumps like is tries to get physically in between the two okay so you're you're sort of charging down yeah. uh, this little path towards the rocks doesn't, doesn't attack but like says stop and moves forward. Yeah. Um, as you move in front of it and and yell, this chimera turns its attention towards you, and you need to roll initiative because. <laughs> well, that was fast. I, I know, <laughs> didn't really think there was going to be a Ooh. conversation time here, but you know, we were going to give it a go. Uh, hold on. Do do I get to re-roll ones for initiative? Yeah, you get to re-roll okay. all ones. All ones. I wasn't sure if it was all of them. Halfling, lucky. Not much better, though. I guy rolled an <laughs> eight. Mm, look at us with with some <laughs> some initiatives there. Well, we should tell the audience. What we yeah. yeah. Oh yes, I also I also rolled I also rolled an eight. I okay. I don't usually use D and D Beyond, so I'm gonna use my physical dice and just look at the pluses. Um, All right. I got a mm, the sound nineteen physical dice. plus three. So, 22 for initiative. It's a much better initiative. I have a 13. 13? All right. Voyage, you are up first. Um, I guess first, as a free action, I'll just like to address the man and just ask him, are you lost? He, he, he like, looks up from his place and says... Why, yes, I am lost. I'm very lost. Please help. <laughs> it's enough for me. Insight so, check. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I'll, uh, what a liar. Jeez. <laughs> I will first just make a uh, sh regular attack with my heavy crossbow at the chimera, uh, trying to stay not too close to it. Um so I will do that to hit its plus seven. I'm rolling. I got a six. Plus seven is a 13. That does not hit. Does not hit. I will do the same thing again because I get uh, two right. attacks per action. Or er, wait, will there I do the same thing again? Um, hold on. Sorry, I'm just looking for everything. Uh, yeah, I'll do it again. Ooh, worse. That won't hit either. Um, <laughs> so, then I guess as a right, so bonus action, really quick, <laughs> just to try to get something in, 
I will use the magic stone cantrip and then uh, use my sling to chuck it. It won't be as much damage, but it's something. Um, All right. And that is a 17 to hit. 17 does hit. Nice. So that's 1d6 plus 3. Um, that's just 4 damage. 4? All right. So you fire off these two arrows. Each arrow sort of goes wide as this um, creature is um, trying to move down off this boulder and head towards Athene. Um, and you finally get frustrated with that and sort of whip up a stone with a, a quick movement and fling it in its direction, and it strikes uh, the lion uh, right in the side of the jaw, and it, um, it sort of buckles under the, the strike of that and, and uh, sort of turns your way. Um, let's see. You said it's Hibernos? Am I saying that right? Hibernos, yeah. Hibernos. <coughs> or Hibernos. Hibernos, depending on whether you want to drop the H or not. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, this seems a bit rash, but I will, uh, I will cast Reduce on the Chimera. All right. <laughs> what kind of saving throw am I making? Um, well, that is a constitution 17 saving throw constitution 17 all right what we got here in terms of bonuses <clears throat> all right mm, made it <laughs> well you 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 cast a spell you see there's a moment where the the wings sort of shrink up a little bit and the, the chimera <laughs> throws its, he its heads back and it bears its chest and um, sort of shakes off this this effect that's trying to change it into a, a tiny adorable creature. <laughs> <laughs> Things would have gone better for you had you let that happen. Um, that I have a two. Oh. Oh. Yeah, no, I don't. Not at the moment. So that will <laughs> I'll just that'll be. Sounds <clears throat> good. Um Arena, you're up. Uh cool. So I am uh not interested in wading into close combat with any of this situation. So I'm gonna cast guiding bolt at first level. Cause that Class sounds like a thing classic I can do. Guiding bolt. Classic guiding bolt. Classic guiding bolt. But you know, not a great roll. Classic Kira. What'd you, what'd you roll? <laughs> what'd you roll? Guessing a 13 does not hit. Does a 13, 13 hit? 13 <laughs> does not hit. Yeah. Well, we weren't going to talk our way out of this. Apparently, I'm not going to fight my way out of this. Uh, but that is... Uh, I'm going to... Well, everybody seems to be moving, so I'm going to stay put. I don't want to stand near anyone else, so I'll just stay put. <laughs> All right. Athene. Uh it is your turn. You are uh, put yourself between this creature and the boulder, and its attention is on you. It's been hit by uh, this rock, but seems <laughs> seems ready to pounce. But it's your turn. Uh, I think I. How close is it? Am I close to it? I assume I'm pretty close to it. Yeah, yeah. If you put yourself I'm between it and the rock, range. then yeah, you're in melee range. <laughs> okay. Um, does it seem does it, does it seem at all phased by does it seem just more and more aggressive essentially? Yeah, it seems mad. Okay. Um and I think she would, you know, uh shout like stop foul fiend, you must back away for I am not a fiend, whether be protector of the stars and then she would stab it with her spear. Stabby stabby. <laughs> you must back away. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I'm going to go just go ahead and stab you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stab you already. <laughs> I'm do that this, anyway. this is not a threat. Um, we're going we're gonna to hold on to that channel divinity. Um, so yeah, I will go for it. stab you, stab you with spear. Hey, that's not too bad. 22 to hit. Ooh. 22 does hit. Um, and so we're going to roll for piercing damage. 
and that's going to be seven, and I am going to expend a divine smite. Um, Always be smite here. Classic paladin. Yeah, and so I <laughs> deal two d eight uh, extra radiant damage. I'll expend a spell slot for that. D eights. Where's my D eights? There's my two D eight. So that will be six radiant damage. And let me make sure I mark off a spell slot for that. Um, so total... And then, hmm? oh, do I have to remember all of that? <laughs> uh, let me see here. It was uh, seven damage that was piercing and six damage of radiant. Okay. So total 13. Uh, and then I roll again to hit. Yep. Hold on one second. More stabby stabs. More stabby stabs. And this is a 25 to hit. Uh, yeah, that hits. <laughs> okay, we'll roll damage again. That's just six damage. And then because I am a polar master, we're going to roll to hit again one more time. Is this your bonus action? Hit him yeah, with the butt end of the polar. Yeah, nice. so bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Um, and that <laughs> I think our halfling friend has this. We should... I will protect all of you, for my name isn't Athene Weatherby, protector of the stars. And uh, then she doesn't. She totally whiffs it on the the last one. I rolled. Still, I rolled an eleven. Um, you. So what's your name then? <laughs> Athene Weatherby, protector of the stars. Um, but she Orion, her steed, I think, also acts on her action. Mm-hmm. Um, so. We'll have him just, he's a blink dog. He's a, a, a like jet black blink dog with little specks of white on him. And he looks kind of grumpy. And he seems like this was a, he, you can see him thinking that this was a bad idea. But uh, like, you can just see it in his eyes that he was like, this is an awful idea. Why did, why did we not just kind of chill out, observe the situation? Um, but you can just see that in his eyes. Um, so it's a plus three to a d20 to hit for his bite. So I'm rolling a d20. And we got a 17 uh, plus three. So that'll be a 20 to hit. Yep, that hits. And uh, so damage is just one d6 plus one d6 roll. And I rolled a four. So he does five, five bite damage. Nice. So you reach out with your spear, you do two quick stabs, and you, you turn around your pole, uh, but it pulls its heads back just at the last minute, and you miss, but as it reels back to, to sort of uh, recover, your dog reaches up and, and bites at the, the wolf at the, the throat and does a little bit of a, a, a quick rrr and uh, draws a little bit of blood. Um, but it is now the Chimera's turn. Uh, the Chimera doesn't seem super excited about all of this, um, but is, is seems easier to get to you because you're not hiding behind a rock. So um, it, the, the wolf reaches out and takes a bite in your general direction. Uh, so let's see. Let's see how that goes. Uh, 22. That does indeed hit. All right. And what's the damage from wolf bite? And if something was to, oh, is it ju only attacking? It's just um, me right now. With, with okay. the bite, yeah, because okay. it's melee attack. Okay. Uh, so that's nine points of piercing damage as the wolf uh, bites into your shoulder and gets a, a good grab. Um, the lion also tries to, to bite at you. Um, let's see how this goes. 18 does not well. hit. Yeah, I have right? an armor class of 20, so... Armor class shield, 20. Shield and spear. spear, spear. <laughs> Using the shield and the spear. Uh, the, the lion, however, you throw your shield up in front of it. It cracks its teeth on the edge of it. It's trying to pull the shield away from you, but you're able to hold on to it. Um, the dragon, however, has turned to the rest of you um, and is going to breathe fire uh, in your general direction. Um, so I'm going to need a uh, dexterity saving throw. From, let's see, let's see Are they within from. 10 feet of me, just as a heads up? Uh, no, you ran ahead. Yeah, you ran, you ran ahead. Gone. I'm definitely not within 10 feet of Sorry. you. Yeah. Uh, this this does not get you. Have we learned our lesson, Athene? Probably get not. you and the dog. But <laughs> <laughs> the rest of you need to make that dick. I'm actually trying this. 
Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on in on this lucky that I have because. Oops, oh, that's a good one. Save. Hopefully, a oh, 19 please. will be uh, useful for this save. Uh, a 19 is useful. Uh, I wasted a lucky because I had a six, and now I have a 10. Mm. <laughs> 10 is not good enough. No, I knew Wait, that. You got a. 21. 21. Yeah. Excellent. So, um, Voyage and uh, Hibernos, you both take half of 36, so you would be 18. Yes. And uh, Raina, you take the full 36 damage <laughs> as this fire washes over you um, from the head of this uh, red dragon that is attached to this. Um, but we are back to the top of initiative, and it is Voyage's turn. First, uh, as a reaction, could I do absorb elements when it does that? Sure. All right, mm. I will do that for later. Yes, use those resources. Excellent. <laughs> All right, and then it's one d six. Is that and that's how much it reduces it by? Is the correct? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, I think you. Yeah. All right. Uh, five. So that's a. Thir that's 13 damage, and I have that sealed up for later. I'll remember that. Okay, so at the top of my turn, hmm, um, I guess I will first, I would like to um, try to get this done faster and uh, use a second level branding smite on my lance before I run into attack. Um, Nice. So, casting that, which, uh, make sure I'm doing this right. Um, it's a bonus action, and next time I hit a creature, I will have an extra 2d6 of radiant damage. All right. So then I go up within 10 feet and use my lance to attack, which has a plus four. Oh, let's see. It's a 10 plus 4, so the first one does not hit, but I'll just go ahead and do it again. What is it, total? Uh, is it a 14? I, yeah. 14 Wait, was Is total. it a 14 total? So 14 hits. 14 total? Oh, yeah. I just rolled really bad the first time. I forgot about that. Okay. So <laughs> there were a lot of 13s the first round. The <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. That's and I was like, 8 mm, damage from figure out. the lance itself. Plus four, six, plus ten radiant damage. So, Ooh. eighteen damage, ten of that radiant. Um, and that's nice. my. Are you also doing one the attack? Fire. And to, to uh, a, a question. If I do an attack, can I then just cast a regular spell, or does it have to be two attacks? No. If you two take attacks. the attack action, then uh, that is your actions like taken up to do that and you just okay. you have two cool. attacks so per will, attack action uh since i moved up to him i can't really move back so i'll just attack again with my lance Sounds good. and that is a 16 plus 4 it's a 20 that hits mm -hmm. um and then the d12 is a is that a nine or a six let's pull it out that's a six. Um, and I think branding smite only lasts for the one time, right? Next time you hit. Yeah, yeah, next yeah, attack. So th that's just the six next damage, six. regular damage. All right. And so you turn. are, you charge, you charge forward with your glowing weapon uh, and stab into uh, this beast and it cries out in pain uh, and then you are able to get in another smaller stab um, before stepping back into a guarded position. Uh, Hibernus, it's your turn. Well, I'm going to respond in kind to the, <laughs> the flames that came at me, only reverse it a little. Um, <clears throat> I Push my glasses up on my nose just a little bit. Prepare 
<laughs> point at the creature, and I'm just going to do a cantrip. I'm going to do Ray of Frost. Nice. So I will try to hit 15. 15 hits. And that is going to be 16 points of frost damage. 16 points of frost damage. Um, all right. That seems normally effective. Um, the the creature reels back, and especially the the little red dragon head itself is like <laughs> lets out like a, a terrifying little hiss in your general direction. Doesn't like that frost. And I I just comment to it. It would really be in your best interest to stop now. We can discuss this like rational beings. Stares and I will. I don't. I don't know how distant I am from. It. You're about like 15 feet. How far away feet is it? From where it's at. Yeah, I'm backing up just a bit. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I will back up. I can move 30 feet, and I would much prefer to be on that, like, you know, 45, 50 feet away. <laughs> All right. Sounds And also not in a line, because apparently <laughs> that was a real bad plan. I didn't realize how close together we all were. Just waltzing down the path like <laughs> Wizard of Oz. <laughs> La la la. Uh, Reyna, it is your turn. Uh, yeah. So uh, Reyna sort of reaches up and pats out some flames, and she is extremely disgruntled. And she says, Athene, your job is to make sure I do not get killed as well. Uh, and she's going to let loose another uh, guiding bolt and see if it works this time. Nice. Hopefully. Mm, 19. Huzzah. 19 hits. I hit something. Uh, so this is going to be 46 radiant damage, which is uh, 15 points of radiant damage. And the next attack against this thing is with advantage. because. Yeah, your, your beam shoots out from your hands and strikes this creature, leaving this glow. What color, what color does your guiding bolt glow? silvery color uh, across this creature as it reels a little bit as um, taken aback by this brunt of this magic. Uh, Athene, you're up. Uh, how, how's it looking just generally? Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely bleeding. It has a number of wounds. It's taken some damage from these spells. Um, it is, it is not in great shape. Okay. I think I will, um, I will, as a bonus action, cast Compel Duel and say, Are you too afraid to face me? Face on, fiend? Faces on, fiend? And uh, cast Compel Duel, which uh, it needs to save as a 15 wisdom saving throw. Okay. Do, do, do. Nah, it's not going to pass that. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty low. Uh, rolled, rolled pretty low there. So it now, um, for Compelled Duel... Uh, on a failed save, the creature is drawn to you, compelled by your divine command. For the duration, it has disadvantage on attack rolls against creatures other than you. And it must make a wisdom saving throw each time it attempts to move to a space that is more than 30 feet away from you. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to stabby stab it. Stab stab time. Stab stab time. Um, and the first one is with advantage. Oh, well, don't need it because we rolled a natural 20. <laughs> nice. Um, let's see here. Wah, and wah, so wah, we wah. will. Wah, 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 wah. Um, let's go. Let's go and do the damage there. Oh, I rolled pretty much max damage almost, too. So that's 16, um, 16 piercing damage. Mm hmm. And we are going to roll again for the second attack. And this is not with advantage. I rolled pretty well. That's a 24 to hit. Mm -hmm. I'm rolling super good. And I feel like I'm just going to need this later. This juice is like being used up right now. My good rolling juice. And it's just going to be gone later. Um, Excellent. Use up all your luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's 10 more piercing damage. Ooh. 
Um, and so what's the kind of layout of people? So Veros is farther away. Like 45 feet away. 45 feet away. Mm-hmm. Um, You're right up in its face. I'm right up in its, its face. Grill. And the other two. I'm are, way back. <laughs> you also moved back. <laughs> Everybody else is far away. Except for Voyage is still like 15, 20 feet away. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to make sure I, I'll stay like obviously within melee range of it, but if I could like swing around so that way I am um, within 10 feet of Voyage somehow. If that makes sense. Because that. Does that work? Uh, yeah. Does that not work? Potentially. I won't. That... I won't be between it and the dude, but okay. Um, so uh, you have these stabs. Are you doing something else? Can my dog? Can my dog bite it? Um, here, here goes Orion. He's he's grumpy and he wants to blink away, but he only rolled a thirteen, so probably misses. It's not not gonna hit. Thirteen does not hit. Uh, so we have a lot of 13s. Yeah. It's not helping no. us. The, this chimera looks at you, and so you have compelled duel. So it has to make a wisdom save, you said? Yes, if, it, uh, it's, if it's trying to move away. Um, uh, I mean, it, it is. What's uh, your DC? It is 15, probably. Ooh, it just made it. So it is, it is actually just going to disengage mm-hmm. and... It's, it turns and, and starts flying away. Oh. Uh, That's right. Looks... Fly away. Retreat. For you have encountered Athene Weatherby, protector of the stars. What happened with the 30 feet away with your uh, spell you cast at the beginning? Though? It um it it beat the wisdom save to fly away. Oh, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Just cool. just beat the wisdom save. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. yeah, just hit that, hit that no, DC 15. It, like literally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it flies away. Um, are you pursuing it, or are you just going to let it go? Athene. I would prefer not to, and I'm going to attempt to collar Athene if she does. <laughs> and, and in fact, I think Orion uh, blinks her back to the group, like the group that's further away, except he tries to. He blinks back, but she just falls um, immediately where she was sitting. Do I during <laughs> the middle of your speech? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oof. <laughs> She's like that. That's right. Ra- Orion. Orion, get back here. Orion. And you know he's back with um he's back with Reyna, and Hibernos, and just kind of chilling. Nice. Um, a- after a moment, and y- you see this this man sort of peek his head out from behind the rock, slowly crawl out, and um he stands up and sort of tries to dust himself off, and and re-centers his ascot and. Um, reaches down and picks up all of his his parchment paper and his quill and, and stuffs them neatly in his jacket and he says, uh, "Greetings, chums. I'm Volo. I I thank you very much for your assistance." Volo Thump Goddard, we yes. have been sent to retrieve you. You are wanted back on the Imperial plane. By whom? Agma. Really? Indeed. Agma the the deity you all serve agma yes yes fascinating you see he takes out his notebook and starts writing things down because my fame <laughs> has traveled farther than i ever expected the, this <laughs> is wonderful to hear um so you are here to uh to protect me escort you escort we are here to yes. escort you out well um excellent i i as soon as we gather the information we can we can definitely leave <laughs> Information? Yes, I'm working on a book. I'm going to call it Volo's Guide to the Inferno. I, th- I think I that seems a little long. Maybe for the the posters, we'll just call it Volo's Inferno. <laughs> Good sir. How I much think it more is. do you need? Oh, it's it's hard to tell. I I. I've, I've been tr- trying to find my way. I've gotten lost. Um, Would you it can not tell make more he's sense to exit now, gather a group to escort you through the hells, and then return. I, I see. I considered that, but I find that it's it's quite difficult to leave. Actually, that is why we are here. Well, to escort you out. And then okay. you can come back and resume your research. <clears throat> I'm sure Ogma's blessing would be upon you throughout all of the time that you had here. 
well, I, this has been a very harrowing experience and my nerves aren't what they used to be, although I still do enjoy a good adventure. Um, so I, I'm, I'm comfortable with this. Let us, let us leave. Uh, please take me out. Raina like pats out another smoking piece of her, her like outerwear and is like, yeah, out. How, how is your, <laughs> your means of travel? Did someone well, take the full brunt of that that one? Um, yeah. Was it just Raina? Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll do a, a quick lay on hands and give you, um, like, a solid... Um, well, we could do a short rest here in a second, so I'll, I'll wait on that. We, we do have an amulet we can try. Yeah. We have been told it likely will not work and that we will have to proceed yeah, physically out. we have to out. go through. Oh. Yes. Well. But uh, we can try means- the amulet. Uh, attempt the amulet, but um, if we are going to go deeper, that seems like a great opportunity for me to continue my research. Have you gone deeper yet? Um, I've I've been wandering around. Insight check. Insight are check not, into that. Not, not particularly an answer. It's it's uh, quite confusing yeah. here. You find on these uh, planes that they right. are they often are are infinite and directions are difficult and as is time i'm not quite sure how long i've been here Athene. can can we tell or can i tell uh which level we are currently on you can give me knowledge i would say history or arcana either one Ooh. of those will work i am i am expertise in history I mean, so can, maybe i'll roll better than a two oh. can i, I oh i rolled a four Ooh. so Ooh. it's a 13 27 <laughs> 27 27 <laughs> So with your 27, Finally a high number. you feel very confident <laughs> that you're not even in the Nine Hails yet. <laughs> you are in the area sort of above the Nine Hails. This is the, we call it like a waiting room, <laughs> really. Ra- Raina just raises an eyebrow and pants out a little more smoke and goes level zero. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he goes, that, that is disappointing. I did find that there was far fewer devils and other uh, elements of the Nine Hells that I expected here. Just a corrupted chimera. Wonderful. So, I well, will attempt the amulet. I don't expect that it will work because that would end the one shot now. But mm-hmm. I'll try it anyway. <laughs> it works Game perfectly over. now. You find out that oh, no. <laughs> it does not function <laughs> as expected. <laughs> I was like, man, I hope nobody tries that amulet. (laughs) Um, But no, you try it. The magic fizzles for a moment. You can tell, as you were told, something appears to be blocking this device now that you are here. Um, Like a plot point. (laughs) Like a plot point that may come to light later. Mm. Voyage starts humming with excitement. Ooh. Ooh. Shall we proceed? Then? Is, that a, is that a good hum or a, a, a hum we should address something? Do we need, do we need to rest before we this go is a on? Good hum. I think a rest might be right, might be in order just to preserve some of the energy we have in case as we enter the hells we encounter some issues as we might. Mm. <laughs> Taking a moment to prepare for uh, warmer temperatures and more hostile climes. <laughs> Okay. So y'all take a short rest. Um, you can sort of crouch down here in a, a location and, and rest for a little bit um, un- undisturbed. Volo is sort of taking notes in his book. Let me see. Gonna roll me some hit roll dice. Because I got ouchies. I'm gonna roll a hit dice too, just to, again, yeah. preserve lay on hands for times when they'll be plus six i'm just why, doing one yeah i think why I not am, a short I'm rest doing one three as well six there we go uh, well that's a little better all right after y'all's rest what do you do I just got nine back. well i think it's time for us to <clears throat> find this exit i'm sure we'll be able to ascertain exactly where we need to go and um well we have a map which should help us with that yeah, yeah. before you who, say we have a map, has the map athena's just walking I forward ha- i would i i'm oh. uh, i'm proficient in anything cartography related so okay I think that would make sense then i can have the map okay 
I just don't want Athene to have the map if she intends to charge everything we encounter. <laughs> Uh, Athene, what were you saying your your strategy was before you just mentioned walking the map? forward, walking for uh, probably as this conversation is ha- happening though, Orion, who understands common, would like kind of like just bite the back of her armor and hold her as she tries to move. Nice. Um, so good dog. <laughs> voyage, you take out the map, um, and as you look at it, there is so there's sort of a a rough path. The map seems to be almost like. It zoomed in on the area that you're at um, so you can see sort of some very close landscape to where you're at like the large boulder um, this area of the valley and some trees are all marked on it and there's a there's literally just like a little path that's set out that you can sort of easily say okay so we're supposed to go down this path up here there is also a message written at the bottom in a very um, ornate handwriting and it says pass through the gate and then head into the fog when you reach the river, you must find the ferryman. Hmm. All right. So, don't have to be an expert at maps, <laughs> but I think you should follow <laughs> this trail and then talk to a ferryman. Does that sound good with everyone? Ready to go? I don't know. This map looks awful confused, and I do, I do hope you're really pushing yourself here, Voyage, making sure the path is clear. I'm absolutely not. We will go on. This <laughs> I think that sounds. Good. I would prefer not to swim any river we encounter down here. A ferry sounds nice. A nice ferry ride in the country is always wonderful. You see, yes. Bolo's writing down all the stuff you just said. Ferry. <laughs> oh no! At one point, Raina's like, "I appreciate knowledge as much as the next, probably more than the next person." But this is—is is this going to happen the whole trip? She's asking Volo. Oh. You know, write down everything we say the entire trip. <laughs> uh, I am I am duty bound as a scholar to keep delicate records of these experiences. You never know what we'll need to go in. Volo's Guide to the Inferno. <laughs> May I? I s- She's like looking over his shoulder trying to figure out if there's a description of her getting torched by a dragon. <laughs> so at the top of the page, you can see uh, in some... <clears throat> Uh, in his like sc- sort of scratchy handwriting, it says, "Alas, halfway through my short and esteemed life, I have found myself lost in a dark wood. For the right way was lost. Uh, oh, woe is me! I will surely die here." <laughs> and then it's like goes on to talk about like hiding behind a rock and all this other stuff. But yeah, it does seem like a pretty like accurate account. May I see the book? Um, he says. I would need you to sign a non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> this is this this book's this, under contract with my publisher. This and can so, be done. Do you have okay. the agreement? Um, I'll draw one up as we walk. <laughs> well, at least you won't be writing other things that way. <laughs> well, shall we follow our uh, trusted guide through these treacherous paths? Yes. yes, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yes, good. we are going. <laughs> All right. So y'all, y'all head out. You start following the map. Um, Volo takes out another sheet, and you can tell he's he's writing out um, very quickly um, this contract that you've you've agreed to sign. Um, and um, after you guys have been walking for an un, a really strange amount of time, like it's it's really hard to understand time in these planes and stuff. And to a certain degree, it's personal and unique to each individual how much time is passing. Um, but you're not sure. It seems like he did this fairly quickly, but it also could have been like hours. You're not 100% sure. But he does eventually hand you, uh, Hibernos, the this sheet of paper that has a place for you, like an underline at the bottom for you to sign. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, it's a lot of very small like handwriting. <laughs> Oh, I'm definitely reading the entire thing, everywhere. <laughs> All right. You give me a um, probably knowledge, just a straight, no, I don't know. There's not a knowledge law, I guess. <laughs> investigation, uh, it, maybe? You could do investigation. I'm good with that. That seems to make sense. You know, you could have just read over his shoulder. He's not I very tall. I rolled a five, tall, so 14. 
<laughs> 14. So you are you're reading through here. You it definitely it's you can't disclose anything that you read. If you do, you're going to owe a lot of money to the pub, a lot of gold to the publisher of the book and names all his publishers and people who have first rights on it and all this sort of stuff going down through there. While you're doing that and sort of paying attention to this contract, um, at the at the last minute um, in your distraction, something swoops down out of the air, um, and let me see what happens. Uh, what's your armor class, Sabernos? Uh, Eleven. Eleven. Um, all of a sudden, you feel yourself like restricted. Something has like grabbed you. The rest of you see in a flash something has almost dropped out of this sort of foggy, almost sky that exists here. The rest of you can tell it's it's some sort of flying snake, and it has just wrapped around Habernos quickly like a constrictor. Habernos, go ahead and give me a charisma saving throw. Is uh, he? And we're all walking like close together, right? Yeah. Yeah, you'll yeah. get a plus three to this save, whatever your thing is. You get a plus three. Get a plus three Nine. to the save. <laughs> Nine. You feel yourself and your very form starting to shift. Um, you realize your tongue has split on the end, um, and you are you feel something sort of sprouting painfully from your back. Um and your arms are sort of like you've been sort of compressed, but you you start trying to like push your arms out, and you find that that uh, is a is a difficult thing to do at the moment. Um, oh, this you is curious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you say this is curious. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> you take actually twelve points of. Um, this is probably going to be uh, like psychic damage. Um, the rest of you see Hibernos's form actually starting to turn almost like serpentine. Um, you are also restrained um, and uh, by this this creature, grappled and restrained. Um, no, wait, a seven foot seven tall Goliath snake. who weighs three hundred and ten yeah. pounds is turning into a serpent. Yep. Uh, yes. What are the what are the rest of you doing while you see this happening to Baroness? Is was this a spell? Yeah, is this a spell? This is not a spell. Okay. Okay. Un unfortunately, is there still a snake around yes. Hibernos's neck and that I would like to cast? The I'd like snake, to try and you'll pull notice, it off. the snake actually s has started to like its nose is flattened a little bit, and the color of its flesh is turning from like scales to like a smoother skin color, and it's turning the same color as like a Goliath's like bluish skin. Can I like pull him off? Can I like grapple him or like uh, pull him? Yeah, you can do a grapple. Um, do an athletics check um, to go. attempt to grapple the snake. Seventeen. Uh, you are able to get a good hold of it. Are you trying to... So you've got the snake. It, it is now grappled by you. We've got a grapple-grapple situation. Um, and you're going to try to pull it off? Give yeah. me... Um, so this is essentially like a like a push or a pull maneuver. So give me another yeah. athletics check. Strength athletics yeah. to um, attempt to hold on to the snake. 19. Ooh, good. Uh, you are unable to remove this snake from <laughs> this Goliath. Didn't roll well on not getting grappled, but rolled real well on staying on uh, this Goliath. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, Reyna? You sound like you had something immediately ready to do, too. I was going to cast Sacred Flame on this snake thing, uh, and sh and I still intend to do so uh, with uh, an apology. It's to fine. Just hit me. The, the No, not you. I was an apology to Hibernos because I don't know who this is going to affect, but I'm still going to do it. Um so I need a dex saving throw from the snake. DC 16. Uh, Hibernos, what is your dex saving throw amount? Uh, That's why I'm apologizing. Reyna knows I what she's doing. I have a plus doing. one on dex. Uh, what is your save, Reyna? It's 16. 16. Uh, it is just made. Yeah. Um, made the saving throw. Yeah. So then there is another flash of silver that just, like, of silver flame that just, it dodges apparently. Question. <laughs> Yeah. Because I would have some sense of how this works. If I were to teleport myself, can I leave the thing wrapped around me behind? Or would it come with me? 
Um, generally. You, generally speaking, you can teleport out of it as long as you can cast the spell while we're strained. <clears throat> Okay. Which is which is usually uh, dependent upon um, whether or not you can the do um, the hand gesture. It just has verbal components. Then you can then you can teleport. And I'm gonna thunderstep. Gonna thunderstep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so you cast thunderstep. It has to make a save, correct? Uh, For the does. damage, because so, it takes damage. Well, and more than just it will. Um, anybody <laughs> within ten feet of me. Needs okay. to make a Constitution 17 saving throw. <laughs> All right, that Everybody gets include... a plus three to that. Two's close. I would just. <laughs> well. So what is it? A deck saving. The, the serpent failed. Volo failed. I uh, also failed. <laughs> um. Yeah. Let me see I, if Orion fails. I for sure failed. And. One second. That I have a is. Plus one. Oh. I he didn't have time eight. to guidance anybody because I was too busy not successfully casting other spells. <laughs> it's normally okay. thunder damage, but it is going to be seven points of ice damage or frost damage. Seven. And seven everybody points. should take half of that, probably. <clears throat> it'll be so it'll be four, three, okay. three, four. So the snake's mm-hmm. gonna take half. You're putting the snake in your aura. No, only, only, <laughs> only our friends take half. Oh, okay. okay. Only friends. <laughs> this Sorry. is a friend. This is a friend aura. This and is friends. an aura for friends. <laughs> Just Hashtag like, aura for friends. To clarify, the um, uh, my awakened spellbook, my spellbook that I have, lets me temporarily replace damage types of any spells I cast with a spell slot. Nice, that's convenient. Um, so you you oh yeah, go ahead, voyage. Oh, I was just saying, my my Constitution saving throw is actually a higher plus than my uh, check. Attack. Yeah, I did. I rolled a check, but you're good. So you rolled a twenty, right? Yeah, I got a twenty, but nice. I, still figuring out the website. My bad. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> no be seven frost damage unless you're able to reduce it. Yeah, everybody should be halved who's friendly. Okay, and it could be half I mean, and halved. This the snake just wants to hang out. It's friendly. no, no. Okay. To, it was sort of turning into our yeah. friend. That was a little it's disturbing. Half, it's almost half your friend by now. No, I hate it. I so hate it. I hate now, it already. I hate it so now much. Now that I am uh, uh, some distance away from the snake and left it behind, am I changing back? You do find that your your tongue sort of sp- like. F- seals back very quickly um, and your arms mm-hmm. sort of detach from your body. They seemed almost like connected, like they had been like growing into your torso. And the snake starts to immediately lose its its features as well. Um, it flops to the ground sort of surprisedly and like looks up and starts to try to fly away. Are y'all pursuing <coughs> or? I mean, I technically had it in a grapple still, right? Um... Yeah, I guess you technically do. You weren't able. I'll to let it go. It, it I'll is, let it go. If it's uh, if it, it looks like it's attempting to flee, I it guess is trying like like it's like a kite, like trying to get away from you. <laughs> no, you you're, you're here now. <laughs> we'll let that go. Okay, uh, it it flies uh, away, barring anyone taking some sort of action to stop it. So we should watch out for those. Yes, that did not did not enjoy. That Volo, experience. Goes, Volo goes, good chum. That was quite surprising uh, and quite painful for everyone involved, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I would prefer that that not happen again. Now, uh, back to this. So far, I've been burned and frozen in the last. Now, <laughs> or, I'm not to return to it. this contract, and I will read it from the beginning, word by word, again. <laughs> He, he sits there and listens to it as y'all, as y'all continue walking. Um, after you've walked for a while, you realize the contract isn't really nefarious in any fashion. It is pretty much exactly what he said. If you, if you talk about what you read to anyone, you're going to be, you're going to, people are going to come after you for money um, and, and defamation charges and all this sort of stuff. If you keep your mouth shut, you're fine. Will manifests in my hand and I, Sign, sign the contract. It. He goes, yes. And, and he just starts like going through the notes with you and being like, here, I was, I was telling about this, this place. What you get the impression from, from like what he's written so far is one, his notes are weird. He really just seems to be like writing out random thoughts in the midst of a lot of these notes. Um, 
that you're not 100% sure would ever make it into a book. He really, like, he, he came down here using a magic circle from uh, his friend Elminster, who was unaware that he was doing this. Um, and he came down here to start this work on this book that he promised his publisher that he could give and got an advance on. Um, but once he got here, he's he's basically just been wandering around this valley ever since, trying to avoid various creatures and stuff that live here. Um, and surviving off of the magic um, that he is he, little what little magic he's capable of I will um, add a paragraph to his book describing him as a person and his general demeanor in this place and then hand the book back he looks at it and he goes is it a flattering portrait <laughs> it's an honest portrait okay mm. he, he, he looks at honest. it and he, he looks at you nods <laughs> And you see him, him take a few notes, and over his shoulder you can see that he added some adjectives, like as little additions in there, like the handsome vol. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he goes, "Yes, excellent. I like I like what we're seeing here." Um, but as y'all continue to follow the map, you eventually reach a a very large um, wrought iron gate, and above it there is the inscription um, over an entrance. That says, um, abandon all hope, ye who enter here. Does anyone have any hope on them? I always bring an abundance of hope to all situations I come to. Because you should probably set it down over here. I cannot, I'm, I'm, for I am Athene Weatherby, protector of the stars. I don't know if you've known this, but it's important to me to bring hope to all as an oath of the ancients as i've made this oath i need to bring hope to everyone who has knowledge of this world perhaps not a literal instruction the gate at all well we'll find oh, out oh. i i see. more of a warning that what comes before us is less just than just indeed indeed helpful that does <laughs> the scene's already seem like to make more going through the go just to Experiment time. Walking through the gate. Volo is like sketching the gate. <laughs> you have to drag. You have to drag him away because he's sitting here doing like a very detailed sketch, uh, and he's. You see, he's got like notes underneath of it, and he's like, "Where does this text come from? Who inscribed it here? Is it literal?" Uh, uh, after y'all's conversation, he's like, "Is it literal or metaphorical? <laughs> Should you actually abandon hope? If so, how are one to do that?" Does that make you more likely to survive in this dark and desolate place? <laughs> yeah. Raina gives him not a shove, but sort of a polite nudge as if to say, we need to keep going if you're going to keep writing. Ah, uh, 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 sure. Yes, I think I, I think I have what I need here. And he, he begins following. Come, come, Orion. In... <laughs> that you're riding on? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I, I have Orion behind me at this point because okay. I was I had jumped off to, you know, observe, look around. I'd like to think he doesn't. He just hangs out with me. <laughs> and he's like, mm -mm, no. Oh, he'll just blink uh, up forward at the last second. Like, he'll just sit there and grump. And then, like, at the last second, like, blink to where we are. Nice. Um, yeah, y'all head through the gate uh, into this fall. Do we feel hopeless after going through the gate? No, you don't feel anything in particular. I was feeling hopeless before the I mean, gate. that's up to you, really, whether you feel hopeless or not. <laughs> That's where fair. you're at okay. mentally and emotionally um athena's great she's burned out of 10 and out of 10. frozen just just <laughs> burned and frozen that's pretty hopeless um yeah y'all um travel through this fog for a while um and after another one of these long periods it seems like you've been walking for quite a while but um it's still very hard to pinpoint like has it been an hour? Has it been two hours? Has it been eight hours? Um, you do eventually come to a point where the fog starts to sort of lift a little bit, and you can see what appears to be a very wide river of blood. Um, and on this bank of this river, there, is, there are a lot of um, people who are huddled. You can immediately tell that they are not alive they do not make indentions in the sand um, as they walk they are sort of semi-transparent you think they are physically here but they do not necessarily um, they're not all here 
essentially the same way that you are. And they're all sort of standing along the shore and they seem to be waiting for something. Do we see any sign of a fairy? Um, depends on how long you sit here. <laughs> I mean, I'm actively looking for a fairy because, as I suggested, with any river we encountered was not going to be something we would want to swim how, through. Uh, how wide is the river? You, through the fog, you cannot see the other end of it. Look, it's an ocean. We've reached an... Uh, they said that we would go to a river, but it seems like we've reached an ocean instead. This is very confusing. I'm not not quite sure what the situation is here. The well, ocean is are, moving very oddly, too. With there the, appear to be plenty of people to ask. It's true. Uh, have they noticed us? Like, are we noticeable? Has anybody kind of, like, looked our way? or? You're noticeable, but no one seems to be paying sure. you much attention. Raina looks at Volo and says, you seem to be the chatty type. Did you want to go? He he hears that and he's like, "Oh, excellent!" He, he runs up there. I will happily uh, accompany you, good sir, for I am. And you know, Athene also follows him. Um, <laughs> yeah, Athena, Athene, you walk up there with him, and he uh, immediately just sort of like, "Hello, good sir or madam. Um, I my name is uh, Volo. I would like to introduce myself. I am currently writing a book, and um, I would be interested in how you came to be in hell." <laughs> um. <laughs> And this this sort of shade turns to him and um, has a very dour look on its face and um, and says, uh, I, "I lived I lived a life," uh, and and starts telling this sort of sob story about um, being unhappy with their lives. And Volo's like writing it all down as is sitting there talking, um, and he's like, "Yes, yes, yes." It sounds terrible. Um, and and, and then what happened? <laughs> And I think Athene would interrupt him and be like, it's okay. You did your best. And I'm, oh, I think uh, you should know that there are people out there who are proud of you and proud of the work that you've done. And like, you know, gives, tries give me, to give the person a pat on the shoulder. Give me a persuasion roll. Will do. Will do. Ooh, that wasn't great. It was a nine. He says, no one cares for me. If That's I if they true. did, I wouldn't have died Ouch. alone. Oh. There are so many people who care, even though they may have not been with you at that moment. Ogma cares. Have you heard of Ogma? <laughs> who? Are you are you attempting to convert people who are already diseased? <laughs> this is an interesting strategy. Hey, I mean uh That's what a paladin would do. Says I I, I do not know of of Agma. Meanwhile, you notice uh, Volo's interviewing somebody else at this point. Uh, oh, <laughs> Raina! Raina's going to sidle up behind Volo and just sort of whisper down and say, "If I were you, I might be curious about what they're waiting for." He goes, "Oh, that's a good point. You over there, what are y'all waiting for?" And turns around and says, "We wait to cross the river Styx." The ferryman comes, and about that time, you notice in the distance there's a little shadow in the fog coming across the this bloody river, um, and um, a once it gets in the sight, you see a a very large like road style boat, like l road like Venice. Think like Venice boats, where there's like one person with like a long stick who's a gondola. Yeah. Like a very large big, big gondola. gondola. It appears to be made out of like skulls. It's it's very metal. Uh, <laughs> has like skulls and torsos of like rib cages and stuff that have, have like built it. And on the front, um, there is the head of like a very large like devil um, facing out with like a large set of horns. The person rowing it is a very large humanoid figure. Uh, aside from their size. They appear to be just sort of standard humanoid, but they do appear to be about 12 feet tall, um, and they are quite like long and lanky and, and drawn thin. Um, not so much so that it seems like this is impossible for a human to be this way, but it is quite stark in this um, uh, this setting. And as the as the boat hits the shore, these shades just start piling onto it. 
The map would suggest that this is our ride. Excuse I'm me, my good sir. <laughs> Go ahead. You should just get on and not make a scene if that can be possible. Hey, Rana, Seems... what were you going to say? <laughs> Raina, oh, Raina's I, nodding and she I looks at Bolo. Say, and she I, looks I'm at currently theme. drawing pictures and mm. taking notes on the anatomy of this creature that has been driving the boat and just they're not really paying attention to what's going on. I, I'm too busy um, sketching the boat and the driver and taking notes on interesting anatomical features of this creature that is whatever i can see as, as you're doing Raina that Volo attempts like, to move everyone in the direction of the boat uh, as you're doing that you look, volo like looks over and goes i like what you did with his legs and you can tell ah, he's yes. also drawing the same thing <laughs> oh yes you, you've done a nice job yourself mm. are, are Raina, are you like muzzling athene and telling her to shut up and make her not talk? i am i am gently trying to hurt everyone perhaps with orion's help in the direction of the boat as as you push people and i am also putting a hand gently over athene's mouth going save it for later as as you approach the ferryman points in y'all's direction and says you are not of the dead you do not belong on this boat ah is there another one How where would we, you we could proceed you do not belong here at all uh, this is indeed the place we, we are attempting, attempting an leave. exit <laughs> <laughs> says um you should stay away from the dead lest you become dead yourselves am i living you are <laughs> oh no existential <laughs> moment here for the war my, my mind starts racing Warforged have Warforged are living. They're a little different than like constructs. Yes. So you've yeah. got some you've got okay. some living juice going for you. Mm -hmm. Got some soul in there. Right. <laughs> is um, there any way we can convince you to go, or is this just a recommendation? And we can... Is there a? F <laughs> well, I do want to make sure that we pay the proper fee for crossing the ferry. Usually, I the ferry I went to, you know, I in other locations during summers i always wanted to make sure that you know we we paid the proper fee if that was appropriate he says what do you offer well i do have uh two two gold would that would that do he sort of leans down and as he does you can tell like he's not of normal human proportions the amount like he seemed like he was like 12 feet tall but as he's leaning down He's leaning down a very far distance. Um, you I mean, almost just puts it further up, you know, holds because she's very short. <laughs> and he he looks at your uh, your gold, and he says, "It is copper pieces." Oh, we certainly have copper pieces. Excuse me a moment, and then she rifles around. And how many? How many per per? person how how would we do and this he, he holds out two fingers two very reasonable prices here in the nine hells i must <laughs> and orion like scratches her leg <laughs> to be like hurry up and so she'll give um i guess it'll be 10 to, uh for well orion to 12 12 gold, uh, copper pieces for orion volo and the crew uh he he, he says <laughs> the crew warrior he says now. you must keep them till you arrive Okay. And she just holds them in her hands right in front of her. <laughs> full hands full of copper pieces. Um, anyone who has history wants to roll it, you can. Yes, please. Um, I don't have history. <laughs> Athene would not have history. Uh, 18. I rolled a 14 plus 9, so 23. Ooh, 23. I also got an 18. Nice. Uh, with the 23, you know the story is generally that they are over your eyes. So if nothing else, you probably need to distribute them. <laughs> Yeah, I think Raina just reaches over the top of Athene and plucks two out of her. What? We need we need those for the. Uh, indeed, each yeah, e everyone. each of us needs two. Uh oh. Okay. Well, you know, we can pass them out like you know, like concert the, tickets. The the stories that are told of crossing the river uh, involve the dead having two placed up one upon each eye. So we may want to cover our eyes with these. This Let's seems see how that works. And I try and just hold them up to my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little small, but I mean, they block your vision fairly well. 
Um, uh, are y'all I mean, I'm a little boat? large. That's true. <laughs> he after after he, he tells you that he leans back up, and you can tell this is a, a great distance that he's traveling back away from you. Uh, yeah, Athena will hold them on her eyes and Orion's, just like <laughs> <laughs> hopping on the boat. <laughs> Volo just takes them and, and shoves them in his pocket, and he's he goes and hops up on the boat. He's still interviewing people. Um, at one point, are the rest of y'all getting on? I guess I should yeah, ask that yeah. too. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the ferryman pushes away after everybody is aboard. Um, after a certain point, y'all have been on there a pretty short period of time. Volo starts asking the ferryman questions. Uh, he doesn't seem particularly keen on answering those. I think Raina's sort of following Volo, and when she sees that that is not working out the way Volo expects, is going to attempt to redirect him again and go get him to talk to someone else. <laughs> All right. Like, don't don't anger our ride, Volo. Curious as you may be. Mm. <laughs> he, he, he nods in understanding um, and, and goes over, and he's sort of interviewing some more people. Um, y'all have been on the boat for quite a while, um, and... Uh, after you, you sort of you can't see either shore anymore. Uh, there's a certain distance away when it's, it's mostly just clouds. Um, you hear a voice from the water say, um, is that Volo Thamp? Volo. I think Raina just grabs oh, hold of the back of his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> like, she doesn't know what he's going to do, but she doesn't like it, so she's going to grab hold of the Athene, back of his shirt. <laughs> Athene has been holding the, the pennies over her eyes and Orion's eyes this whole time. And then this is the point she's like, wait, wait, what's going on? Do we? And still, still leaves Athene, them on. Athene, uncover your eyes. <laughs> we Boys might try have a- to put him over the eyes, but it's just kind of like one continual unit, so they're just kind of there. And he turns to her like, How, why are you so popular? What do you do? He goes, I'm, I'm quite well known. In Faerun, I'm sure you've read many of my books. Um, there's Volo's Guide to uh, Monsters. There's Volo's Guide to the Underdark. And he just starts reciting these things. Um, but he's like, but who who said my name? Uh, and he, he looks overboard, and you can actually see a um, one of these shades in, in the blood water has risen up, and it appears to be a dwarf. Uh, and they, he says, I knew you in life, Volo. Um, I am Dromo Gleamhammer, and he then he smirks a little bit and says, "Of course you're down here as well." Uh, and Volo says, "What is that supposed to mean?" Uh, and he says, um, "You well, you've died, and you've you've come to the Nine Hells with the rest of us." And Volo straightens up and says, "I would like you to know, I am not dead. I am here on research." <laughs> and <laughs> at this, the 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 dwarf seems to get like really angry and he says you're not dead and you mock us down here you come walking alive you are the reason i died you abandoned me in that ghost-ridden tomb to write your books and he reaches up and actually grabs volo's ascot and tries to like pull him over the side of the boat i'm still holding on to the back of his shirt like (laughs) i was not letting go of him just in case he decided to lean too far overboard curious about who was talking to him all right. Anyone who is trying to prevent Volo from being pulled in, uh, let me know. Yes, uh, I am. I, I'm also I will also. I I'm think right. to, to try, but not physically. I think okay. uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll come to what poke, you do in a second. Poke the dude with the back of her spear. She'd give him a good poke. <clears throat> give him a good try poking. and pull him off. All right. Uh, so those of you who are trying physically to hold on to him, the boat starts to sort of lean and tip in that direction as this weight is pulled on it. Please give me a dexterity saving throw. No. Volo Why? has in turn started kicking this guy in the face to try uh, to get him to let three, go. Plus three to your rolls because of me being nearby. Mm, that's still only a ten. <laughs> Man, all my good ones getting out of the way. I will die. Yeah. <laughs> We'll prevent that this time. Hashtag okay, spoilers. We'll <laughs> uh, so we got a ten, a twenty-five, and a what? Oh, I was I was pushing. Do I also make a deck? Yeah, save? yeah. You're there at the edge okay. as this is like rocking. Uh, the only so one who I said got... they were trying a non-physical method was Hibernus. Yeah. So thirteen. <laughs> I got a thirteen. Rules. Thirteen. Um, so. Uh, Athene and Reyna, you fall over into the uh, this bloody liquid. 
um, you immediately realize this is the open boat all again. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is no. a bad time. Uh, you immediately realize this blood is not like this. This river is not like uninhabited. There are a lot of creatures in here, and they immediately start grabbing onto you and attempting to like pull you under. Um, so. Hibernos, I'm going to go back to what you were doing because you had some sort of plan for non-physically mm -hmm. preventing this. What's your uh, What's well, your idea? I, basically, I, I'm saying, my dear fellows, this is no way to behave. If you want to discuss with Volo, you should step aboard the boat. Otherwise, please desist and leave him alone. Um, he seems that, like in a blind rage at this moment. Very I wrathful, almost. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and is it really wants uh, Volo um, to to pay essentially. Um, so I actually need to roll for Volo see if he falls in too. Um, let's see. He gets plus three too, right? Oh, he made yes. it. Look at him. So Volo is actually able to stay in the boat as he keeps railing these kicks against um, them. Uh, the two of you who fell in, please give me a athletics check as things are pulling at you. There are hands underneath the blood that are attempting to pull you under. Uh, 18 if I get a plus 3 from a yes, theme. Yes, you do. Um, mine, okay. mine will be a 12. <laughs> and that I'll use Flash of Genius to try to help um, so that'll give you another plus three. That'll be a 15 mm. for me. A 15. Uh, so Raina... And a 21, yeah. You are able to fight this off enough that you can start trying to climb back in the boat. Um, and, be, and you, I assume, get some help from someone, uh, probably Voyage uh, or Hibernos can help pull you in. Athene, you are pulled under for a moment. You come back up gasping. Um, give me a wisdom saving throw. Uh, that's going to be a 26. Nice. You do not lose any of your memories. <laughs> uh, uh, as you are pulled into the river Styx. Um, you are sort of flailing here. Um, Voyage, Hibernos, you are both still on the boat. You still can sort of do some sort of action. You can help Raina onto the boat, who is trying to sort of scramble up the side. Um, Volo is still sort of fighting off this guy, although he has not fallen over. He's he's still sort of kicking him, and they're going back and forth as he's trying to get free. And he says, let go of this ascot! It's worth more than you are! Um, can I cast a spell? Uh, yes, you are not restrained under the water. Um, the, I'm going to... Uh, and I have, like, my mouth above, like, I can make a verbal... Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to cast Misty Step and Misty Step into the boat. That's a, that's a good decision. Uh, so you Is misty it, step. Was it a good decision? <laughs> misty step up out of the out of the blood into the boat. Um, voyage, Baroness, what are y'all doing? Um, everyone's back in the boat at this point, right? Everyone's uh, well. If some Raina will have to climb another turn and attempt to get into the boat unless someone helps her. Um, and okay. Volo is still fighting like, off I someone. I should not be allowed I will, to climb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> someone and someone is still attempting to pull Volo into the into the the blood. Can I stab hit, Can I stab this dude with my spear? Can I stabby stab? Uh, I mean, Misty step. Step's a bonus action, so yeah, I yeah, guess you still I can have stabby, an action. Like Misty Step and bam, like you know, we'll give it a give it a go. Stabby stab with the spear. Uh, that'll be a twenty three to hit. Yeah, that's gonna hit. Cool. Um. That'll be 10 damage. Yeah, he, he lets go as you sort of stab into his chest. And as he sort of reels back and has taken this damage, um, you'll notice like hands sort of reach up out of the blood and start pulling and ripping and pulling at him. And actually you just see him slowly start like vanishing back up underneath the blood. Thank Envelope. you for desisting. <laughs> you say to the guy who's getting dragged under the blood. Yes. 
Um, so I assume someone helps Reyna into the into the boat out of the blood. As you're coming <laughs> up, you see there's there's like hands that are are sort of trying to hold on, and they let go at the last minute as you like pulled your way up um, out of the out of this. Um, but you are all back in. Many of you are are covered from head to toe in blood. Um, Bolo is sitting there like uh, scrubbing his ascot, which has blood on it now. Um, do you each still retain your copper pieces? I do, yes. Do I? I assume I do. Do yeah, I have copper pieces? Yeah, I'm good. Cool. Yeah. Unless you were just holding them in your hand when you got thrown off the boat. <laughs> no. no, I would have, yeah, put them I away. also probably have a few extra. I, I immediately put them back over my eyes and Orion's eyes. It's back to... Vola <laughs> <laughs> oh. says, some people are so rude. Can't help anyone. You were we'll particularly rude yourself during that encounter. Generally, kicking well, one in the in the face is not done. Well, I was fighting for my life. You saw he intended me harm. Could you not have solved it through conversation? Oh, uh, these these souls have have made their way to the nine hells. I don't know that there's any conversation to be had with them. I thought his story are. was somewhat interesting. He said that you left him abandoned him in a tomb oh that ghost, I, I think that is a, a, a gross mistelling of that event if you would like to know more about the that occurrence you can do so in bolo's guide to ghouls and ghosts uh which was published last year um i think uh i'm gonna roll an insight <laughs> just real fast <laughs> and appropriately, why can I not see that? I just rolled a seven, which is about right for a theme. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, tell the truth. Books, books sound like a great idea. I mm-hmm. mean, knowledge truly is power. So I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> Literally, yes. yes. <laughs> does that does seem like a great way to find out about what happened in that circumstance? <laughs> oh, excellent. I, it's a great read. One of my best. I don't read a whole lot. Mm. <laughs> Out of curiosity, Volo, are we going to meet lots of your friends down here? I, I know not who we might meet down here. How many companions have you traveled with who have died? Oh, I've had a very storied traveling career. So many. Got it. I mean, <laughs> people fall, and it is always a tragic loss when you lose someone who has uh, meant so much to you. He goes back to cleaning his ascot. He goes, you can mm-hmm. see his fingerprints. <laughs> Raina looks at Athene and goes, many. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that. You have to protect one another when you journey together and protect the knowledge that they bring to your journeys. He goes, I assure you, uh, I, I do. I do. <laughs> Athene probably believes him. <laughs> Orion doesn't. <laughs> Voyage, you were saying something? Uh, Voyage just scans him for a little bit and turns back and looks, uh, I guess not looks, but is sad, just looking into the river. (laughs) Nice. Um, So, um, the boat, the ferry continues on. Um, Volo goes back to sort of interviewing, putting some people, but you can tell he's he's not as excited about it. Does does everyone Um, on the boat seem sad? Yeah, they do. Very much um, so. Yeah, they're all they're literally all on their way to hell. I think. Um, I do think that Athene would 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 yeah yeah she'd sing the Wellerman song and like try and cheer everybody up. Oh no! She, I am I am proficient in loot. I probably don't have a loot with me, but I probably have like a little you know maybe a, a tiny traveling loot that she keeps in a backpack. So you you sing a little song to try to brighten some mood. Yeah. Uh, g- give me a performance check. We'll see let's see goes. if let's see if this is their first torture. Uh, as she's singing, as she's singing, Reyna's gonna reach out and put a hand on her shoulder and cast guidance. Oh hell Ooh. yeah, hell yeah! That's a D four, right? Yeah. I get to use guidance. Look at me uh, go. Uh, Voyage just tries to help by also tapping along um, on the boat itself because uh, he's proficient in drum. Ooh! So you got advantage Ooh. on your performance check. Okay, let's do another. I Taking mean, we did well. Action. We got a. Uh, 19 plus one so it was a dirty 20 but let's see if we get a little better 
We definitely don't. So we'll take that twenty. It was twenty. 20. Okay. You see, you see some people who are a little crestfallen. Seem a little bit better. Maybe, maybe hell won't be so bad. <laughs> Got some good music. <laughs> <laughs> Boyish leans in and says, I would have sang Highway to Hell myself, but this song is fine, too. I just, you know, I figure since we're on the sea, uh, on the open seas, this made the most sense. You still think you're, you're right. on the sea. Right. Yeah. I do, do you believe it is a not river, the not the sea? But you can't see. We only saw the one shore. We're probably headed for the it other one. It is a one. wide river. Right around what? the time you say that, the clouds part a little bit <laughs> and you see the other the shore. Comes in <laughs> What is the ocean but a wide river? <laughs> mm. Getting deep. <laughs> Getting deep. I would like rather not get Nothing deep. Nods. In this river. No, it was uh. real bad. You don't want to be in this river. We're trying to go deep into hell, though. Brain is like pushing it, washing, like pushing a little more blood off where you don't want to go. First circle. <laughs> <laughs> nope. You, uh, you have uh, arrived uh, on the shore. Um, you are encouraged to debark. Although, bef- debark? That's not right. Uh, disembark. Disembark? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> debark. Take all your bark Take off. Take all the bark if you've off got, this place. If you cast bark skin, you need to dispel it. Be um, patient. Right. Uh, and before you go, the, the ferryman leans over again and holds out his hand. Athene puts the pass. copper on her eyes. Copper, copper pieces Head for over everything. coppers and say, I thank you, good sir. He goes, um, heed my warning. If you are among the dead, you will be dead soon enough. And the the copper seem to vanish <laughs> as he's like takes them up and they seem to disappear into a cloak. Um, and then the boat turns and goes in the opposite direction. Okay. Map. I trust him. Let's be fast. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, Rena looks at Voyage and says, "Map. Where does it tell us next?" Uh, yeah. Voyage pulls out the map and takes a look. Can I do a perception yeah. check to kind of like just generally look around a little? Uh, just you get can. the vibe. So you have you are on a it's a very rocky shore. Um, it is definitely warm here. Um, the sky is sort of like a blanket orange color that is. It's not crisp. It's not clear. You can't make out any forms. There is. It's like it's polluted down here. There's always like a, a smog in the air. Um, but aside from this sort of rocky, almost desert-like terrain, you don't really see much. You do see the these souls um, shuffling off in the same direction. The map says, um, "Take the cave path until you exit, then travel toward the tower in the distance." Um, and you see the direction that the souls are going, the map is pointing you sort of off the side, almost further along down the river bank um, in comparison to where they're going. But that is a great place for us to take a quick break. So we will, we will take 10 minutes. Uh, we will go grab some snacks and stuff, uh, and we will come right back, and we will see where they end up uh, by the end of all of this been been quite fun so far so join us back there after this <laughs> are we are we off the air
experience? Check out some of the events that the Virginia Tech libraries have to offer. Learn about the wondrous world of machine learning and demystifying machine learning. Or learn about 3D modeling in Meshroom with basics of photogrammetry with Meshroom. Improve your data mapping skills with Introduction to Map Data Visualization, or learn about making virtual reality experiences in A-Frame in creating Web XR experiences with A-Frame. You can also improve your research and organization skills with literature review tricks and tools. Register today for one of our events at calendar.lib.vt.edu. We hope to see you there! Virtual Environment Studio opened up last year in October, so it's pretty relatively new. Uh, it's a space that we provide virtual reality services to the students, such as development or just even trying out the VR to play games. We are located in Newman Library, fourth floor, room 4020. VR equipment right now currently is pretty expensive, so people who can't afford that kind of equipment can come here and try it out for the first time, see if they're interested or if they can use the new equipment to develop any sort of software they need. With so many events and meetings taking place online these days, you might find yourself wishing you had more than one screen. If that sounds like you, come down to Media Design Studio A to book one of our portable monitors. The lapel monitor displays its picture in a beautiful and crisp 1080p, so you won't miss a second of your video or your meeting. It features built-in speakers that let you listen to your lectures or your favorite movie, and it's compatible with phones, PCs, and gaming consoles, so it will suit you no matter what device you're using. The portable monitor comes with a cover that also serves as a stand and HDMI, USB-C, and USB-A cables so that you can attach your computer into the monitor. It's quick and easy to use. Just plug in and you're ready to go. Go to bookings.lib.vt.edu to try out one of the Lapau portable monitors today and bring your workflow to the next level. Hey, my name is Sophia and I'm going to teach you how to reserve a seat at the library. First, you're going to grab your phone or computer and go to lib.vt.edu. When you get to the website, you'll see information about the seat registration system under Fall 2020 updates. Click that link and it will take you to the seat reservation main page where you can access maps of each library if you want to reserve a specific spot. After clicking Book Now, you'll have a list of options to choose from including which library, the zone, which at Newman is organized by floor, category for what features you'll want your spot to have, as well as an accessibility option. When you click Show Availability, your options will be organized by your criteria. After booking your seat for however long you want it, you'll get an email confirmation with the code for when you get to the library. Newman Library has maps on each floor showing each seating area. After finding the seat number for your booking, go to your phone camera to scan the QR code, or you can get to this information by clicking the link in the confirmation email. Once you've typed in your check-in code, you're all set for your study sesh. Make sure to wipe down your seat before and after use to keep you and your fellow Hokies healthy.
Hey everyone, welcome back uh, to the role of play. On this episode we are diving into Dante's Inferno in this D&D 5e one-shot. Um, our players um, up until this point have located Volo, um, who has been lost here in the Inferno in the attempt to write a new book. Um, and they have rescued him from a chimera. They got attacked by a, a strange snake that was trying to steal the form of Habernos. Uh, and they were able to cross safely cross the River Styx, although we had a, a little bit of an overboard situation. Um, seems to happen a lot on the role play. <laughs> uh, but uh, good times all around. And they have arrived on the other side of the shore, and their map has directed them to go a different path than the path that all of these uh, poor lost souls are following. And so I... Question for the DM. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> go ahead, Finn. Never mind. I'll wait. No, I was, I was just going to ask you, what do you do? <laughs> oh. uh, may I roll a history check to see if I know anything about this tower that we are being directed towards? Go for it. Anyone wants to roll a history check for more knowledge of towers? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. I don't think. I uh, twenty four. Twenty four. Uh, history is like the only thing I can do tonight. Twenty one. Eighteen, twenty one, twenty four. Those are a lot of good history rolls. I'm gonna say all of you are. When you you hear that, your immediate except thought for me. is Just throw it out <laughs> except there. for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, your immediate thought is there is a city down here. It is known as the city of Dis. And it is uh, supposedly massive, um, and one of the only like important structures that can be seen at a distance. Um, uh, Athena is looking up at the sky. Are there stars in the sky here? There are like, not. what is? Yeah, what does the sky look like? Smoggy and just sort of plain. Like, there's no, you can't see any light sources. There's just sort of an ambient light to the smog. And it's it's just sort of a dull orange color. Not a huge fan of that. Not her favorite. Not her favorite thing. <coughs> as protector of the stars. Sure, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, are y'all following the map? Yeah. Um, I think it's a good idea because we won't be as among the dead as we would be otherwise. So less among the dead, less likely to end up with them. Yeah. Maybe. Our main Maybe intent is somewhat. to exit, and this map is supposed to help us do that, so we should mm -hmm. adhere to its advice. I don't imagine Ogma would lead us astray in getting out of here. <laughs> sure. Y'all um, follow the map. It does lead you to a cave entrance. Um, you follow it through a, a sort of rocky outcropping. and In most cases, it's a pretty wide tunnel. Um, it is rough. It has not been sort of hewn and, and, and shaped by... Um, by hand, but uh, it's crossable. There are a couple places where things get a little tight. Um, it is it is dark, so if you don't have a light source, you would need, and you don't have dark vision, uh, which Volo doesn't, so he needs a lantern, which he pulls out from his uh, his little bag he has on his back um, and lights it. Anyone else um, can feel free to use his lantern or get your own light source. Um, but you you walk through this darkness in this tunnel for. What seems like a very long time. Uh, Hibernus, you wanted to... It looked like you were wanting to interject. Oh, I, just that I would... As it gets dark, I would um, <clears throat> conjure up some dancing lights. They uh, they definitely look like books, but they mm -hmm. just radiate a nice warming light. And there's four of them, so I'll just have one each, kind of, with each of us. Nice. Yeah, hey, Volo seems to like that, um, seems to enjoy the book lights, uh, allows him to put his lantern away, and he can sort of continue taking notes and sketching uh, as you walk through this darkness. Your impression of how long you've been walking down here is it's it's been quite a while. Physically, you're starting to feel very tired. Um, you There's no real day-night cycle down here, and... Um, but it is, it's just taxing. You've been through a lot so far. Um, you do eventually exit the cave. You come out in a place that is much hotter than where you have been up until this point. There are, at this point, pools of magma um, sort of scattered about. Um, and you can easily avoid them. Uh, and you do, in the distance sort of towering and, and dark on the horizon. You can't make out the details because there is still a sort of layer of the smog and fog between you, but there is a, a quite a large blackness hovering behind this, um, this fogginess 
that is sitting there on the horizon looking very much like a tower. Um, I assume you head towards it, or...? The, the map is pointing us to the tower? Yes. Ooh, I don't like this. All right. If that is where it says we should proceed, then I can hope I, we go that direction. Can I make a perception check, like, when we exit the cave to kind of get a general idea of our surroundings, like, look around, see if there's any, like, signs of people who have kind of come through this way, like, since everybody else went another way? Uh, yeah, you can make a perception check. That's a solid uh, 16. Solid 16. Um, you uh, you notice that you are lower in elevation by a significant amount than you had been previously. Y'all, we all walked primarily downhill while you were there. Okay. The environment around you looks, the terrain looks quite different. This area that you're in is not frequently walked. Um, that is something you can tell, although your your one caveat to that is, from what you saw, most of the these shades that you had passed previously were not making footprints, were not making marks mm -hmm. on the ground. Um, so they could have gone through here and you wouldn't know, but there's no signs of any, a lot of like footprints or movement and things being disturbed um, in this area. Um... If you check the map again, because you're, you're curious about it, um, there's a new message at the bottom. Uh, mm -hmm. And it says, there are no shortcuts into Dis. You must find a way past the wall that stands between all and the evil below. Okay. Well, I for one hate so taking have... shortcuts. You have to take the path that gives you the most. You just have to... <sighs> Charge on forward. Get through it. Okay. <laughs> she well, starts says, walking I do, forward. I do look forward <laughs> to seeing this great wall. I've I've heard quite a tale. What have you heard? I've heard uh, it is huge and guarded by devils. Great. No shortcut. Find a way through. Right. Yep. So y'all continue on your path? Yeah. Right. As you travel, <laughs> these pockets of this lava are become tighter and tighter. There's less room and you actually have to sort of divert periodically to walk around them. Still safe to walk. There's still not a lot to worry about just like happen to fall in or, or go a, a very long distance out of way, but it is getting quite warm. Um, so those of you who are wearing like full plate armor or anything's particularly heavy like that, or are made of metal in general, um, <laughs> just anyone <laughs> who happens to be made of metal in general, um, this travel is starting to become quite uncomfortable for you. Um, it's not so uncomfortable that like you can't do it anymore, but, um, it is, it is quite toasty, um, bearing this sort of level of, uh, metal in a place like this. But you do continue to travel, and as you do, this, this form slowly comes out of the fog. First, there is an enormous wall that emerges well before the tower itself does. Um, the wall itself is um, at least 200 feet tall, and as you get closer to it, you can see that it is adorned with defensive spikes. Um, there is uh, the surface of it as you get actually particularly close seems to be to have a certain amount of like glass shards embedded in it. There are any number of um, sort of nasty determinants from actually like touching and being on the wall. You can tell there are ramparts. You can see figures in the distance sort of walking along the top of it. And you also see um, figures sort of further up flying. Um, and, and sort of surveying it. But you can walk directly up to the base of it. You realize this area that you're approaching is not um, not like a main gate. This is just a portion of the wall. So do, do the people look like they're guarding the wall, like that we see? Well, they're not really people as much as they are devils. Yeah, um, yeah. the entities, <laughs> rather. The entities. Not yeah. really people. Right. Um, they do, they appear to be just sort of patrolling, um, the wall, 
which seems to be a duty of theirs. The ones you see do actually look a lot like people dressed in quite um, elegant armor, carrying whips and like long swords on their sides. They're, the helmets that they wear have large um, pronounced horns on them. Other than that, they look, they're quite beautiful. Um, their armor does look kind of wicked, though. It's, it's very dark and spiky and wicked. Hmm. Mm -mm. Hmm. What do y'all do? So there's no, we're just, we're, we can get to the wall. There is no obvious gate here. Nope. Uh, um, how, how tall is the wall again? It's probably like 200 feet tall. Do we want to jump. scope out where there was a gate or is a gate? What was because yeah, what was the thing in the what was the thing on the map? What did it say again? Uh, you uh, can't take a shortcut. You need to find a way through. Right? Yeah, you have to pass yeah. the gate. There is no shortcut into this. You have to pass so or, or you have to pass the so wall, I think, is actually what it said. The there. wall, okay. <clears throat> we could potentially fly over the wall. That would be one way to pass it. There are heavily armed people at the top. Did it say, like, I... through specifically? Or just pass the wall? You just have to pass the wall. How, okay. how thick does the wall look? Um, your guess initially might be like 10 to 20 feet, somewhere in that range. It's hard to tell from one side of the wall without having a, a greater sense, but if you sort of try sure. to look off in the distance of it, it um, looks fairly thick. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. You aren't really doing a great job of hiding yourself, and that's a good perception roll. Um, <laughs> you mm. get a... Uh, um, a little window, a little. It's it would actually be a defensive port for opening to mess with like any sort of attack on a thing. Opens up about fifty feet up the wall. From the mm -hmm. outside, it is almost in in like you can't see it. It blends in with the stone. It's intended to be sort of like a, a secret thing that you throw open and drop oil or push a ladder over or something and then like seal it back up but one of these um sort of humanoid looking um ar well armored people pop their head out and go who goes there who tries to enter the city of dis uh reyna is immediately going to cast suggestion <laughs> okay uh, on this cre on this creature perhaps it be in its best interests to Facilitate our entrance and escort us where we need to go. All right. What is the saving throw they need to make? Uh, that is <laughs> new spell. Who dis? Uh, wisdom saving throw DC sixteen. New character. No, it's new spell in dis. In dis. I was gonna say. New yeah. In dis. Oh. New spell in jokes, dis. Jokes. Jokes. What? What was this? I got distracted by the joke. <laughs> it's a wisdom. It's a wisdom save wisdom DC save. sixteen. All right. She doesn't even think. As soon as she sees a, a head pop out, she does this. <laughs> uh, your suggestion spell seems to f to fail. Um, as um, this creature goes, how dare you? She shrugs and goes, what else was I going to try? <laughs> That's Excuse fair. me. I am Athene <laughs> Weatherby, protector of the stars, and we are here to escort... Never heard of you. Uh, This you is didn't what let her finish. Finish. <laughs> I, you, you guys look alive. Why are you here? We, we are, are here to... Go ahead, yeah. <laughs> we are here because the map that we have says this is how we will exit the Nine Hells. You're, you're not allowed to come through here. Why would we let you come through just because you want to? This is our place. Why would you prevent us when it is the easiest way for us to exit your realm, which appears to be what you desire? We don't own you. We don't owe you anything. No, stay here. Enjoy yourself in the Nine Hells. <laughs> you know how you could 
make me personally. Hey, whoa, sad. your robot's talking to us. Your weird little metal trash can. It talks. That's, that's not a very kind there. way to if refer. They were, they'd be hurt. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I I think they'd be really upset if we uh, were in this city. I think we would all hate that a lot. Um, is can you could you help punish us? Isn't that what you're? Is that part of the deal? You want to be punished? I mean, I can get a yeah, contract right now. No, I um, don't think. I, actually, I don't know. Contracts if are boring, though. It's a different kind of punishment. Do trash cans have a soul? I'm not sure. I'll have to check with our souls department. I, I have the same this is... question, apparently. <laughs> Warforged absolutely have souls. They absolutely have souls, and our companion is not a trash can. They are a valued member of our she, team. She points at you and goes, Why are y'all letting the child do all your talking? The child who brought their dog on the trip to hell. I lean in and I'm saying, not going to lie, these people seem really cool. <laughs> <laughs> their insults are kind of on point. Um, I've been I don't know what you're talking about. And trash can, but <laughs> seeing a thing, a thing, a thing. You, you... I'm trying to think of a. Hold on, my brain is only thinking of how to say this <laughs> one way, and I don't want to. Hold on. Okay, you whoop so much butt all the time. It's just honestly a little bit fun <laughs> to see the internal butt whooped a little bit. Okay, but we can continue with the quest now. Well, that is that is very. I do appreciate the compliment. It's very kind of you, Voyage. Mm -hmm. uh, Points at you, do. Raina, and says, "I don't like your shirt. Uh, it looks like trash." And you're too big for those glasses. You really need to work on your face shape. <laughs> work on your face shape? Thank you. Oh. Wow. Thank you for the observations. Uh, you mentioned enjoying ourselves. Which amenities would you recommend? Uh, why don't you go jump in one of those lava pits? I rather think that would be slightly warm. Yes. Warmer than I would prefer. But mm. I would weird. happily enjoy watching you get in one. Wouldn't bother me any. <clears throat> Got a whole spa back here full of lava pits that we, we hang out in. We'd invite y'all, but you're all just the worst type of creatures. And you're not... We couldn't do that. Sorry. So what, who, who gets to come into this? Like, wh what, what could people. we do? Dead people who are going to be tortured forever. And I, I can get you some documents. We can get them signed right up. That doesn't seem amenable to me. See, you're also hard to work with. This is why nobody likes y'all. See, they warned me before I opened the gate. They were like, there's a group of people that nobody likes. They not the, really? the prime material plane didn't want them. And they kicked them out before they were even dead. They sent them down here. Nobody likes them. And y'all aren't gonna like them either. And they're right. Y'all are. Volo, are hard is this a friend of yours? <laughs> I'm starting to see why. Seems it's like your this. type. <laughs> wow, the shade's uh. really getting thrown from all sides. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I appreciate that y'all bring the puns. I just I don't have them. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. He looks at Volo and he says, "Oh, I, I didn't even notice that guy. Is he important?" Yeah. His ascot's dirty. Well, we would we would is. let you in, except that your ascot's dirty. I'm sorry. You'll have to rot out there forever. Hmm. Uh, well, I did try to convince him otherwise. Um, hey, Bear Nose. It, Indeed, yes. Try, try insulting them back. It seems like... It, him? He's going to insult us? How would one I, do that? Hold on, let me get my friends. <laughs> and he acts like he's <laughs> put his head back here and he's like, all right, we're all listening. Excited. Oh look, oh, look no one came because you have no friends. Interesting. <gasps> oh, they're just uh, they're up there listening. You do see some people like flying around, sort of stop to hover. <laughs> it's like, we're ready. Come on. Wow, Come you on. must truly smell so bad that they have to stay so far away from you. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Ha ha. Ha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when are the insults going to come? 
I don't know because don't know you haven't really landed any yourself. Ha 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 <laughs> ha. Mm-hmm. I truly mm-hmm. do not understand why someone would lower themselves to insult another. Oh wait, was that just a thing you said? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, I thought we were. I thought you were gonna insult us. My mistake. No, oh, I... you want an insult? I put my arms so that they like shimmer as a mirror, and I say, "Look at this." And it's like <laughs> I look great. Thank you. I appreciate <sighs> that. And that, that they are quite Not beautiful. Lie. <laughs> appreciate the confidence. <laughs> I, Thanks for the confidence, basically. Y'all are really bad at this. You're not even good at insults. Well, maybe goes, you should oh, let no. us in. Oh, to, we can go, practice and have a good have a good time, have a good gander. Goes, oh, great, look. There comes a Medusa to kill all of you, turn you all to stone. That's excellent. Uh, had a lot of fun, uh, you know, just listening to y'all say things at me while I insulted you. Really a great time. I appreciate it. Hope y'all come back as statues. Maybe we'll put you in a nice garden. Like closing the door right now. Put you in a nice garden somewhere. We'll we'll hang uh, tacky clothing on your statue pieces. It'll be fun times for the, everybody. The door is in the wall. Yeah. It's not like on floor level. Like how high up is the door? Uh, it's it's about fifty feet up. It's it's more like a big window than a door. Okay. Hmm. Like he's definitely standing on a an actual floor platform below so really all you see is like chest up y'all also do so notice there is a figure in the distance like headed your way okay we should concern ourselves with that then what you got voyage you got a scheme if i were to cast haste and just charge the door right now before he can close it or they i forgot what was said um <laughs> I think I can make that jump, actually, if I cast Haste, because it doubles your speed. And I think jump is based on height and weight and speed. There's a calculator online somewhere. Hold on. (laughs) Yes, there is. Because that's what I want to do, but I want to know if I can actually do it. Um... I think right. it, I think normally the way D and D handles jumping is it's your strength score, um, and plus you get like yeah. a bonus for a running start. Fifty feet would still yeah. be yeah. a long. You'd have to have a really high strength score. To oh, jump 50 feet. that's that. I'm thinking like horizontal. Never mind. I could for sure mm. not make that jump mm-hmm. at all. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> Never mind. Abandoned. I was like, I'm, um, I want to see what he's got. Fifty like, foot vertical leap. <laughs> yeah. Yes. What I what, <laughs> what, what, <laughs> do instead though. What I could do instead, Jump I bot. will cast um, Catapult at a first level just on a stone after doing Magic Stone and launch it up at him because that's up to 90 feet. Um, okay. So, <laughs> yep, before falling, it go it can go up to 90 feet. All right, so I'm going to try that right. just because Make t- we're about to have to fight a Medusa anyway. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Well, it's in the distance. We could... Book it. <laughs> we could, but before we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Gotta right. get that last parting shot in. <laughs> I will roll. Uh, that's a 17 to hit. 17 does not, does not hit. Um, unfortunately, they are well armored. Um, and he's like, nice try. <laughs> <laughs> and closes the door. Um, yeah, around uh. <laughs> around this time, you also hear Volo go. He's he's been writing all of this down, um, and you hear him go. I've been I've never seen a Medusa before. I'm really fascinated by what this. I don't. <laughs> Ray, Ray <laughs> leans over and says, "And you're not going to see one now. Let's that go." Is approaching. Uh, how far off is it? Um, at this point, probably like 150, 180 feet, something like that. I would. Um, I will uh, use Manifest Mind <clears throat> to conjure forth the mind of my awakened spellbook. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is a tiny spectral object hovering in an unoccupied space of my choice within 60 feet of me. 
It's intangible and doesn't occupy its space. Sheds dim light in 10 foot radius. It looks like a ghostly tome or a, a cascade of text. Uh, so in my case, it's a cascade of text. Um, it can see and hear, has dark vision up to 60 feet, and can telepathically share with me what it sees and hears. And so it can travel up to 300 feet away from me. I'm going to send it over to see what is over there. Okay. Uh, it sees a Medusa. <laughs> In that yeah, case, we I am going to cast Polymorph through the uh, through the um, Manifest Mind on the Medusa and okay. turn it into a swarm of insects. All right. Got to make a saving throw, right? Yes. Uh, where is... You... Uh, wisdom 17. Wisdom 17. What do we got? Oh, okay. Uh, you successfully polymorph uh, this creature into a uh, swarm of... So, you said swarm of yeah. insects, swarm, right? Swarm, swarm of insects. Still common. Yes, it's now a medium swarm of tiny beasts. <laughs> I don't like I don't like not being a snake person. <laughs> uh, I'll sting the, you instead. I'll just have the manifest mind uh, kind of uh, follow along beside it, observing it to make sure that. But otherwise, I'm concentrating, and it is currently not a Medusa. It is a tiny a swarm of insects. We mm -hmm. may wish to move along from here. But we need to make it through this gate. We need to make it through the wall. I am open Can to I suggestions. Do... Can I do any kind of check to see if there, like, if I would sense anything in either direction to see if there was an opening to try to go through? Uh, I mean, you could do a perception check to see if you notice anything. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you probably need to cast a spell to to know if there was some sort of opening. I don't know if I have any spell that would help. So I'll yeah, just can do I I'll look do at the check. wall and look for signs that it has like there's like something that moves, like especially in the ground, like if there's like stuff in the like not soil, dirt. Uh, yeah, I mean y'all can make that perception check. Could that be survival? Or perception's fine by me. The perception's fine. I'll make a perception. Ooh, I got a 22 I, on the perception, by the way. Ooh, I, in it. fact, got a nat 20. A nat 20 plus 4, oh, so it'll be 24. That's a lot of, a lot of good perceiving. Um, this wall does <laughs> seem to be intended as, like, a rampart. This is to defend from invaders. You're not sure who. Um, you can both locate <laughs> the place where this opening was that this um this devil was poking their head out um there does not seem to be anything at like ground level and it does seem to be maintained as if there is some sort of expectation of an attack um although there's not like a bunch of like marks or anything that would indicate that it has been attacked Good things for falling, but not really good things for going up. <laughs> so that doesn't help much. Yeah. Reverse yeah, gravity. I then also gravity. not really. <laughs> mm. um. <clears throat> and I already tried to sway someone to no end. I could. I have some spare spears. I could. Um, let's. I'm just gonna try. Uh, I have 50 feet of rope, and I'll tie it to a spear, and I will throw the spear <laughs> towards the window, like where the window was. Baroness, you I had know. something. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna ask what uh what raw materials might be around. What what's around us? Is that just barren dirt? Is there are there trees? Are there what what is around? It's mostly stone. Uh there are like volcanic rocks, um, which could say equivalent of like glass and stuff like that. Um there's not really wood, it's too hot to be like have much wood around here it would have burned up um previously if it had uh, 
laid around for very long. Um, there is dirt. There's loose clay, um, stuff like that. Is there something in particular? No. It, um, dirt or clay, I wouldn't be able to get us up high enough. Mm. Mm. I just rolled an attack roll with the spear thrown at disadvantage to hit, which I got a 10. <laughs> you got a 10. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it hits the wall. You're not sure it might hold you at a <laughs> if you were trying to like put weight on it, but um, it's there like near that opening. Mm. Um, I have both thieves tools and the feet, the right tool for the job. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think I'd be able to conjure up something to climb, like things to just like? Yeah, you can make a grappling it. hook rather easily. Okay, <laughs> I and will throw it up right beside, that, right beside my like not good grappling hook. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look at the wonderful That's grappling so hook I've made, everyone! <laughs> See the spear? I Ooh. took the spear and I tied <laughs> it to the rope. Very nice. You look over <laughs> Volo's shoulder and you can see he wrote "terrible grappling hook." <laughs> In the mm. I was gonna say, I'm imagining like you tied it around the end, and with one good pull, it's just yeah, it's, slide it's off not, the end. Of it's the not at like a good point. Like there, like in fact, like her spears have a star shaped like kind of thing, and she could have wrapped it around like where it would have made sense. But no. But instead, it's like right at the very end where it's like just totally smooth and just absolutely would fall off immediately. Yeah, but as an artificer, you're immediately able to make a, a pretty effective grappling hook from just random crap you got lying around in your bag. Cool. <laughs> so I will load in whatever and like attach it to a crossbow bolt, um, and then I it is a magically infused item because I just I used that to infuse my main weapons, mm -hmm. um, and then I will shoot it at there and I'll also use a arcane jolt if i make it to push it further in to be sure it stays um, so are you shooting is. are you shooting for the root the top of the wall or are you shooting for where this opening is uh i think i'll shoot top of the wall is a pretty long is. shot the where the opening is is much closer i think i'll but shoot for where the opening is the the range is uh 100 feet without disadvantage okay. and 400 feet okay well and reina will reina would give you guidance Ooh. so you can add a d4 to whatever you have to roll okay yeah make an, so, a, make an attack roll for your aim every faith in your awesome artificer skills but here have a little help from ogma <laughs> all right here's my roll 14 plus 7 so then plus a d4 or it's yes a, so it's a 21 so far yeah and 21 four. um so 25 it's super hit. <laughs> we're gonna get why not make it i mean yeah go for it. You yeah you hit like right below um this spot that you've sort of identified uh and you feel like it's stuck really well into that stone cool um so then i just tell everyone i think we should climb <laughs> and the better question is what happens when we get there <laughs> figure it out i we can't see past the wall and so, there's a swarm of insects coming towards us. Will you all be able to climb a rope? Bad. I should be able to. Should not be an issue. And I can dismiss fair Orion. And he, like, looks really happy for a second. And then bring him back immediately after once we're on the other side. And he looks much less happy. <laughs> I give him a little pat before you, like, before you dismiss him. Bowler says, I'm quite the it's adept okay. climber. You don't. Insight check. I don't uh, insight check. That. I believe him. Lying. Sounds good. Maybe, Sounds maybe cool. he can climb. Um, All right. Who's going up first? I'll go up first. Um, okay. Athene, you start climbing. You have a rope, and I assume you're wearing some sort of boots. So yeah. the glass that's sort of jutting out from here is is not so much an issue for you, unless you. Were, it really is made, mainly seem to be designed for people trying to climb up the wall without any sort of assistance. Um, so you are able to sort of step on it with your boots and you can feel it crunching and stuff under your feet and you feel confident it would be cutting up your hands a lot if you were crawling up this by hand, but you are fine. Um, just sort of leaning back and, and rappelling up. Uh, you get up here to this spot what, and the rest of you start following, I assume. Volo is... Uh, making an effort let's just see if he just completely I, reyna will give volo guidance mm, because nice. if 
the task is to get him back and yeah, he's he fine. would not he makes it up what, to fail. appreciate <laughs> your your assistance in that but he he is able to uh he's not fast but he is he is making uh his way up uh the rope uh Thine, what do you do once you reach the top uh so the, i i see the doors. where the opening would be yep um can i punch it you can Give is it like glass a... is it really dangerous looking no, so the glass is sort of like spotty. It's intended to be oh, okay. random, so you don't necessarily. And you can tell this spot, probably on purpose, is not like covered in glass. Um, you can attempt to break your way in. Your initial like attempt to, I assume, tried to just open it, but maybe you didn't. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I probably would have just punched. <laughs> just, it. Start just, punching. Just, just start punching. Just start it, punching. It it is. You can tell somehow secured from the back, but you can attempt to force it open. <clears throat> Give me a strength athletics check. Strength athletics. Let's do this. Not my best, which is 14. 14 is <laughs> not enough to force this open. You'll see <clears throat> Athene just up there punching. Uh, allow me. I'll cast knock. You cast <laughs> knock. Uh, Athene, you... We knew we were going to need it. <laughs> you hear a <laughs> something metal clatter to the ground as this thing flips open. And I, um, I'm punching it still, right? And it, it opens <laughs> while I'm punching it, so I feel like I did it. Uh, I mean, sure. If that's the case, give me a dexterity saving throw. Hell <laughs> to yeah, let's do it. see if it flails open and knocks you off the wall. Love to see it. Love to see it. Not great. It's going to be a 12. A 12? Um, you are probably going to take some damage, but uh, not necessarily falling off. Okay, uh, you good. take uh, three points of bludgeoning damage that's as this right. sort of hits your fist. You are like raring into it. You were far enough out of the way that when it flailed open, it didn't like catch you in the face. But the force of it sort of pushes Not your so arm bad. back in an awkward manner, and you almost stumble a little bit, but you're able to hold on. Okay. Well, I'll um, I'll just go in, um, go right. into the room. You scramble in. I assume everybody else I follows. I assume we can all fit through the. Yeah, window. yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty big opening, actually. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it would need it's like to be teeny tiny, <laughs> halfling size. Yeah, yeah. like they're halfling should be like fine, they but. maybe have large boulders or buckets of tar or something. They often pour out these holes. But as, uh, as soon as you get in, you see three hundred and ten pound Goliath will fit through. Right. So as soon as you get inside, you see large boulders stacked along a wall inside of here. Uh, and there's also some, some rather heavy-looking cauldrons that are currently empty. Um, there's no, other than the one we came through, no openings of any kind? Like uh, doors or there's a path that goes both ways, like in the distance of the wall. And so you can follow it in either direction. The map seems to be telling you to go right. I assume the Medusa is still a swarm of insects. Yeah, it's flying like up now, up the wall, coming towards okay. you. Yep, I'm gonna bring I, the, I the manifest mind back to me, and then yeah, we'll we'll close the. <laughs> yeah, and I'll I'll close it. And do you think a swarm of insects will be able to get through? I can let it go, place? and and it'll be a Medusa again whenever I wish. Oh yeah, once it okay. out, yeah. I wouldn't have this idea. Never mind. I'll save my lock. <laughs> Never. I'll save my lock. We're good. <laughs> okay yeah so it's, it's it's up in the air a bit by now yeah i mean it's yeah. probably 30 feet off the ground yeah i will it's drop like polymorph uh so it's now a medusa again are, are y'all watching or are you just closing the door and oh no no it? no we're not watching my okay. manifest mind can tell me what happens though I watch as a Medusa <laughs> manifest 30 feet above the air and fall uh, and, and like do one of those like spinning hissing like a <laughs> snake does as it like hits real hard on the ground and then starts slithering away. Uh, the Medusa is departing. Wonderful. Ideal, really. Uh, I do need a moment. I need actually 10 minutes to bring back my my faithful friend orion it, but we can do that later i know we're in a bit of a precarious situation right now the map is telling us to go right i don't see any um way to directly get into the city from here so if, if you we do proceed we should be stealthy okay i think um so y'all are following the map 
That yes. sounds Seems the thing to do. Yeah. Okay. So y'all follow the map. It leads you um, a little ways around here. You don't see anything there. You do come to a point where there's a set of stairs that go down and a path that sort of goes around the stairs that also like continues through the wall. Um, and the map is, seems to be suggesting to go down the stairs. I think out of the tunnel ways where our enemies might be, might be a good idea. That's my initial thought. <laughs> yeah. So you're going down. Um, at the bottom of the stairs, there does appear to be a door that goes on the other side of the wall, the inside of the wall. Mm. Um. If we have a chance to do the 10 minutes, I'll, I would, like, Athene, I think, would cast Blink, so that way, or cast uh, Fine Steed, so that way she could have the Blink dog blink to the other, well, I guess we can't see through the door, can we? Um, Is there a window or anything? Let me double check. I don't think my manifest mind can go through objects. Yeah. I creature. may be able to help with that. Um, Just in case we want to kind of see what's on the other side before we go through. Oh, um, is there any? So I can I can create something that can pass through an opening as small as an inch in diameter if there is any sort of gap. Uh, I mean, you could probably there's probably like cracks around the door. This one is not as tight fitting. Yeah, if there's space, if there's, I mean, this. Manifest mind is a tiny creature. It is tiny, a tiny mm -hmm. spectral object. So if there is a crack that it can go through, I can send it through and see what's on the other side. Uh, sure. So on the other side of the wall, there is a street, um, a rather large street that curves around um, this. It seems to follow the, along the path of the wall. There are a number of buildings, most all of them made of um, a metal, a dark steel looking metal um you do see there are some devils some of them flying some of them sort of walking you see a few hanging out from some of the windows they all seem to just be going about their business of like talking um there's you hear some body jokes being told in the streets and stuff um the map also suggests that there is a path you're supposed to go out into the road and there is a door that you're going to come to down the road uh, roughly about 40 to 50 feet it appears that there are devils going about their business in a city built for voyage the, the city it, it appears to be a city that should be the home of your people but the devils seem to occupy hmm Interesting. I, I'm not familiar with this place, but... But they just seem to be going about everyday business. Yeah. Uh, I don't feel like there's a threat, but also, who really knows in hell? <laughs> so... <laughs> hmm. They didn't necessarily seem super keen on a battle... Or else they yeah. would have annihilated us at the moment that they saw us, right? Can I test the door? Is the door so. locked? The door is not locked. Okay. Like, I'm not opening. I'm just, like, you know, like, mm -hmm. trying the knob. Trying the handle. Yeah. Um... Volo says, I would much like to see this city. Let us... Hmm. Does anyone have anything that could ensure that we could run away very quickly should we need to? I, I could only help one person. I have haste, and I could use blink on myself, so that's only two. But if we can get to the door fast, I can lock it behind us, but we don't know what's past that other door that we need to get to. I mean, I can... I could potentially create some, well, that only helps with one person, though. I could create some confusion. I can create darkness, but that may be an obvious patch of darkness. 
I'm concerned for us as well in the darkness if we had to travel through it. Uh, yeah. Hmm. What a pickle. We should just uh, we should just give it a go. You know. <laughs> Indeed. Let's. I. <clears throat> Athene opens the door and steps out. Um, and closes okay. it behind her. To act natural. Just you? Or, uh, Just me. She closes the door behind her. Okay. <laughs> be cool. Be cool. Uh, give me a, Are you trying to be stealthy? No. <laughs> okay. Um, as you walk out into the street, at first nothing really happens. Um, and then you hear a devil from like a window up above you go, What's that meat bag doing down there? <laughs> Just passing through. And she starts, <laughs> says very loudly, and just starts walking a little. Just like, you know, sauntering in the direction that they indicated that we need to go. The others one indicated. Of them, one of them, like, looks at, like, looks at the one in, like, another window and is like, should we, like, like get her? I think we should get her, right? <laughs> do you have a contract? Are you supposed to be here? I have a, uh, I do uh, indeed have a contract. have a contract. I do indeed have a, co I am supposed to be here. I was contracted for sure. By who? Take the NDA. Who owned your soul? <laughs> My soul is of Ogma. Never heard of him. Is well, he a bone I devil? Very powerful. A very powerful entity. Oh, pit fiend. Perhaps even more powerful. Wait a minute. If it was an no. archdevil, we would know. There's no archdevils named Ogma. Perhaps, perhaps that is the name they gave me. You look like you're still alive. <laughs> Looks can be <laughs> deceiving. Anyway, carry on. It shouldn't. Be I'm gonna a come big down deal. and make sure you're not alive. Hold on. <laughs> Is this just one voice we hear accosting a theme? No, there's a number of like. How, there's, there's a number of them. Okay. Um. Hmm. Bolo's like, oh, I need to hear this in person, and he goes outside. <laughs> no. I suppose we ought to follow. Um. How close am I to like the place that we like the door that we need to get through? Uh, I mean, you got about 15 feet. <laughs> so oh. I mean, you're you're still only like 35 feet away from the door. You can see a sort of dilapidated door. It appears to be made out of wood, which is odd to you because nothing else here is really made out of wood. It's just sort of barely hanging on some hinges, and there's some large gaps in it. Um, and beyond, you just see darkness. Hmm. Uh, I will sneak out and try to get to the door like <coughs> ahead and see if I can get it open so that we have a place to get to if they okay. do start chasing. So you're trying to, trying to be stealthy after your party mate draw all the attention yes all yeah right. and you i get I'll, at all we also have plus seven so we'll see how it goes i won't Let's walk go. towards the door i'll try to like if i especially once i hear the door open beside me i might like kind of even though i'm walking but i won't walk exactly towards the direction to try and attract more of the attention okay let's see so first was an 18 total um and then let's see the other one is a nine total. Uh, I could only give myself a plus three to this. So I don't. I don't think nine versus twelve is going to be a big difference. Um, Were you rolling a disadvantage? Yeah. yeah, I have disadvantage on stealth. So yeah, I do too. Because you know, warforged. <laughs> yeah. Is that why? Or so is your my armor? It's your armor. If you oh, have heavy armor, armor, might be armor. Darn it. As you're as you're walking along, you hear someone go, "Is that your trash can? Tell your trash can to be quiet." <laughs> so, uh, who are all these other people? Well, I was like, "Can I ask y'all a few questions about just like what y'all do here?" If Volo's what close is to me, I'm gonna grab him and just like run towards the door. Yeah. Okay. You two are running. It sounds like you're carrying Volo towards the door. Void, I could you're probably towards carry the door. him above my head, like holding Volo, like little half lane running. <laughs> I've got a, I've got a strength of sixteen. I could probably manage that. Reina and Baroness, what are y'all doing? Yeah, sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties. 
Uh, I'm just, if ever, if it seems like we're running for it, I have very little that's going to help in this situation, so I am going to run for it. Are any of the devils particularly unusual looking? Um, they're all sort of a little weird. There are some that are just covered in spines. There are ones that literally seem to be made out of bones. There are more of the ones that are, are very, um ornate and look very beautiful like beautiful humans there are some that are covered in chains there's one that looks almost like a flesh golem it's got like a deformed face and scars any all over that i body. would not have seen in books before uh i mean they're all a little unique from what you've seen in books but in general the type of devils that you've seen or read about are are here like it's not like Okay. That's Jim if there's unique. nothing particularly unusual, then I will just follow the others. Okay. Um, y'all start running. Were you going to stop and draw? Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, y'all start running uh, down, and you hear one of them go, they're leaving footprints. They're not dead. And they've got a loud trash can. <laughs> uh, this is my home. I should make all the noise I want. I just that seems I'm to confuse them. Out there just to see what happens. Okay, yeah. There's confusion is something. As you start running, there's there's a little bit of a slower reaction on their part. They didn't they don't know what you're doing, and and so y'all take off. You're able to get to the door, and I mean one turn of just using your movement and your action. Uh, the door does not appear to be locked. Um, mm -hmm. are y'all? What are y'all doing? Jumping through the door, through the door, through the door. I think. I will, yeah, I don't think... Mm -hmm. I, Reckless abandon, through the door. Check or anything. As you, We're not hanging out here. As you barrel through the door, Volo sort of stops, and he's still, he's like, I gotta, hold on, I gotta take, I gotta nope, draw nope, this. Nope, 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 I'm gonna barrel over him and keep him Give moving. me a strength athletics check to try to push him <laughs> through the door. Uh, can I See. make it with advantage, like, having Reyna give me the help action? Sure, yeah. There we go. Okay, so the first roll's a 19. I think we'll take that 19. I see. Anyone want to give Avolo guidance? Uh, Gavolo is unable to resist. He does a pretty good job of resisting yeah. you, but is not Surprising. able to uh, ultimately hold on. Uh, and he says, but I need to, dr I need to take the notes. How am I going to write the book if I don't take the notes? Come back later with a stealthier crew. <laughs> uh, Hibernus, are you going through the door? I would like to look inside before entering the door. Mm, this is a good thought. Um, so you do see there is um, there is a strange darkness that sort of seems to encapsulate this entrance. As you approach it and you look down, you can see there is a stairwell that leads down. Uh, and I'm going to make y'all roll to see if you fell down the stairs. I'm going to assume y'all just sort of went with your stride. It does seem to lead down into a crypt. I will, after hearing him, I'm going to peek back out really quick and use my magical tinkering to just get a piece of paper and do a static visual effect of what the door is, if or like what the surrounding is, if he really wants a picture that bad, so I can copy it later. Okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Take a, you take a, a selfie it's with a the selfie. door. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll back out. <laughs> okay. After identifying that there are stairs, I will enter and close the door behind us. All right. You enter and close the door behind you. I'll use my arcane lock. I feel like this is as good a time as any since they're right behind us. All right. And you magically lock the door behind y'all uh, and start barreling down the stairs. Um, you come to a path that leads off into a tunnel that appears to be a underground <coughs> crypt. Um, and a quick glance tells you the map is suggesting uh, you head in the uh, left-hand direction. Um, around this time, you hear a, a banging on that door. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's the devils from outside. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I Open the door. <laughs> No. No. <laughs> I mean, they seemed nice. Should we let them in? No, 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 no. We're not letting them in. Uh, Athene, I don't think we can hear you. Yeah. 
Yeah, sorry, my dog, my dogs are. Uh, Orion is is barking, trying to get back into the game. Um, mm. No, uh, yeah, I was just saying they try. They called our friend a trash can. I do not think that that is proper behavior. They also talked of making us sign contracts. I assume those would not be amenable to our current contract with Ogma. Well, the one cannot know. Just doesn't make sense. I I don't understand the trash can. But one no. cannot know whether a contract is worth signing until one has read it thoroughly. That is that that seems logical. You, you are y'all would having know this conversation at the edge of the crypt? Let's get going. <laughs> Let's <laughs> get going. Keep going. going we only have please. ten minutes before that lock gives up. <laughs> so y'all are running and having this conversation. <laughs> Apparently, they are. <laughs> oh, speed walk, power walking. <laughs> I'd be All running. Right. I'd be encouraging running. So y'all travel through this underground set of tunnels following this map. You you run across crypts periodically. There these are not kept. There's just bones piled everywhere. There's like here's they're not always like humanoid bones either. Sometimes they're strange creatures. Um you're not you're not a hundred percent sure why these are being kept here and no one seems to be paying a lot of attention but you also are not running into any uh thing down here so it's it's quite convenient for you um and as you follow the map through this series of tunnels which is quite complex uh you eventually see a light far at the end of the tunnel um there is a light um and as you exit this set of tunnels um you come out to um, a large set of circular rings, um, and each one seems to be pitted with some strange liquid. Um, and the ring that you are immediately in front of as you emerge from what is really the side of, of a steeper slope. You can tell you've continued to go down, um, and you're coming out essentially in what is a cliff face. Um, nearest you, there is a pit that seems to be filled with excrement. And there are people trying to claw their way out of it. Uh, and there are some little um, spine devils um, with little pitchforks that are running around the edges of the pit, just sort of stabbing people as they put their hands out on the edges. And they seem to be doing it with a lot of uh, enjoyment. And where is the map pointing? Uh, the map is pointing for you to go a around to the right, and it suggests there is some sort of bridge. Okay, it's not in the pit. That's good. <laughs> I, do. I was definitely going to require that I uh, bring Orion back if I was going to have to go through the mud there. That does not look like... <clears throat> so if y'all want, you'll had... It was a long travel, so there is time that y'all could have stopped and summoned Orion back. Oh, okay. And, and I'll bring him back. Sort of there we go. It's definitely He's a point in which y'all feel confident, even if they had gotten through the door, they probably would not be able to follow you. You'd taken so many turns and stuff that... Mm -hmm. So how far away is the point? Like, how big is the pit? Uh, the pit is um, at least uh, 150 feet, like, long. You don't know how deep, and you probably don't want to know how deep. Um, do we, like, is there any cover around it? Like, like how, how obvious are we going to be going around the pit? Um, you'll be pretty obvious there's no real cover the the devils do seem very like distracted this is this is just like a f they look to be like like it's a game almost like whack-a-mole like when they're all just sort of like looking around like you've even noticed a couple of them have sort of like looked over at y'all and they just went back to what they were doing oh okay mm. shall we with my yes i think we can just Mosey on forward, it seems like they are not interested in us for the moment. Yeah. yeah. With my um, disadvantage in stealth, it might actually be better. To uh, yeah. Just walk. Three out of the four of us have disadvantage on stealth. Um, that's the reason I, I brought Orion if we needed like a small recon mission. He has a proficiency and is plus five to stealth. But, uh, nice. Um, as you're walking around, Volo is riding, and he's he says, you know, the stench around here is is quite overpowering. And he's right; it is awful walking through this area. And I as mean, he says, the that, air is the air is definitely somewhat tight, but I don't notice it. 
He says, you don't smell that. Uh, and when, no, and when smell. He, no, no. I I am not able to smell things. Well, but the, the air the, does seem somewhat unusual. You are quite lucky in this instance. And you hear a voice from the pit say, I recognize that voice. That's Volo. More of your friends have found us. And he's like, Who's, who said that? And uh, a human sort of pulls themselves up on the bank. Um, one of the things that you notice is as he speaks, excrement actually comes from his mouth. Um, and he says, I was more Tobin Lathan uh, in life, and you were my rival. And Volo was like, more, more Tobin. And he looks at y'all and he says, it's more Tobin, you all. He was also quite the adventurer and writer of books. Our our novels were often set against each other. But you died a few years ago, which does not appear to have been good for you, but it does help my book sales. Um, and he he says, um, what can you... More Tobin, the, the guy who's in the pit, says, what can you tell me of, of the world and what is happening on the prime material plane? And Volo says, good friends and good chums, I would like a moment to speak with Mora Tobin um, and, and just starts walking over there. And he goes, if you, if you wouldn't mind, I need to hear what he has to say um, and begins. Uh, he sits down on the side of the bank and like starts writing out notes as he's, he's chatting with Mora Tobin. We don't, we don't have time for this. I understand. It's all, it's all in good for the knowledge of, of things, but really we need to get back to Ogma. We have a contract as well. He goes, in a moment, we've we've spent a great deal of time down here. It seems like a nice t place to rest. I would recommend it seems to have been hard on you. Take a, take a moment for yourselves. Regain some of that vigor that has been lost from all of us during these difficult times. And he's still writing like the whole time. I don't like any of this. And he's like, if uh, you could also <laughs> offer us a little bit of space, I would like to speak it with him in private. Could I do, like, an investigation check just to see, like, if it would be okay to rest here? <laughs> yeah. Just, like... Can I get an insight to see, like, what... If there's so, like something the, going yeah. on with Volo, is something happening, like... Yeah, sure. I want to insight this as well. He's... Oh, I didn't do awful. I got a 15. <laughs> All right, we got a 15. Uh, I did do awful, so... <laughs> insight? He, 11. He, you think he's completely in his own mind? Yeah. Um... He genuinely seems interested in this person who he knew in life and wants to talk to him. Voyage, uh, what did you roll for your uh, investigation? Investigation was just a 10. A 10. You think it's mm -hmm. probably safe. No one's bothering you right now. That, that you've definitely been seen by some of these fine devils. Um, they have looked over at you, taken account that you exist and are nearby, but are not really approaching you can tell these are probably pretty low-ranking devils. They're not particularly powerful on their own. There is quite a few of them, but they don't they don't seem to be paying you too much mind except glancing over in your direction every now and then. All right. Well, then short rest, you don't have to sleep. So I think I would actually be comfortable with a short rest then. So I... I'm not. I'm not particularly comfortable with it. But the only thing I can think to do is, and we will not give. I can. I can try and force him to move. But if it fails, he's not going to like it. I don't think we can give you privacy. We are here for your protection. I am Athene Weatherby, after all, protector of the stars, and uh, you seem to be quite a star yourself. So why don't you? I am you... quite well known around the realms. It it does seem to be the case. So why don't you? Um, allow at least a few of us to remain with you and ensure your safety in this place. She goes, uh, ma'am, I'm afraid you haven't signed the non-disclosure agreement, so I am going to have to ask you to back up. <laughs> I will remain in, in proximity. He, he, he looks at you and he says, acceptable. Please do remember the contract that you signed. Um, if Orion stays there with them, do they, does he say anything? Um, he probably just thinks this is a dog, so no, he's yeah. probably like whatever. Um, and I'll go away, but I'll like put my conscious. I can I do the put my consciousness in the steed? Probably not. I we can telepathically communicate though, and I'll just like let Orion know. 
if anything tell goes me everything. down let me know yeah <laughs> so i don't want to know any everything <laughs> just let everything. me like let it be know if something's going down and we'll take a few steps away and yeah. uh voyage reina and i i guess fairness we'll... are you attempting to overhear their conversation or are you just attempting to be nearby no i'm just nearby so that if okay <clears throat> i will try to keep an eye um so that i can hopefully prevent him from falling in if it looks like that is about to happen okay um as y'all are you can take a short rest if you need to um over this time you remain um, unperturbed by the the devils who are walking around um after about 30 minutes or so um Hibernos, you notice they're they're you're not you haven't been really listening but you do notice their voices are getting a little louder and then all of a sudden um the the guy jumps at huh go ahead i don't need uh to hear things so i was actually going to sit to where i could read their lips because i can read lips as long as they're within Ah. so you could probably only read one's lips from a given angle um unless you went and got volo would be the more difficult one because he you would you'd have to sort of position yourself around the pit slightly because he's sort of staring at the pit and the guy is at the oh, edge okay. of it. So to see his face, you'd have to be like down the curve of the pit a ways. All right. Well, Which you could uh, do, but you'd just be further guy. away. Yeah. Okay. I'll do the other so, guy. As this, so as they started to have raised voices, did, did um, you know, Orion say anything to me? Is he trying to listen in? Um, he's trying to see if something's happening a bit, like, you know, he's yeah. keeping an eye out. Yeah, he'd tell you. They're, like, they starting to seem agitated. Um, Voyage, with your lip reading, you're only getting half of a conversation. Most of it seems to be them talking about people and stuff that they had dealt with in, like, Waterdeep. Um, and, um... Right before things get a little contentious, though, they seem to be talking about some woman, um, which is right around the time that one of them, the the guy from the pit, Moritobin, jumps at him, and um, Vola responds by, like, punching him, and they basically start getting in a, a fist fight. Uh... What are y'all doing? It's still, like, early stages, basically, like, a couple fists have been thrown, and y'all can react I go ahead the other people uh, assuming I hear this I, I, I hopefully I'm not too far away like how far away probably like do you know uh, how far away are you yeah I mean probably like 40 feet oh, dang it. Um, from the edge so i mean to volo a little bit less than that but okay could i um could i misty step and then like just pull him away and like grapple volo almost just like like physically get get in between them yeah you're gonna misty step in there and try to separate him out yes uh give me your attack as a as a grapple roll essentially oh so it's a unarmed attack uh yeah, I mean it's just it's just an athletic or an athletics joke, essentially either way doing a grapple for me. Yeah. Oh boy, um, that was real excellent. So a fourteen. I mean, Volo's not wearing any armor, uh, and he doesn't seem to be particularly dexterous. So yes, you still grab him. Oh, okay, um, and <laughs> uh, like physically pull him away um, with whatever right. remaining movement I've got. Yeah, so go ahead and do a strength check, um, out, and you can do athletics if you have it. Um, he's he's obviously still trying to fight uh, with this guy. Um, you're trying to pull him away. Um, Tabernos, since you're there and you're close by, that's that's very good. Um, the you noticed that this has this like exchange has attracted the attention of some of the spine devils, uh, and they seem to be headed in this direction. I feel we ought to exit the area as quickly as possible um <clears throat> is the guy that was fighting with volo uh is he standing is he uh, yeah like he's, he's gotten he's gotten fully up volo? out of it 
Yeah, yeah I'm he's... casting grease <laughs> underneath him. Okay. <laughs> Sliding back. Heck <laughs> yes. So, uh, uh, um, that is a dexterity 17 saving throw. Yeah, he didn't <clears> make it. <laughs> yeah, um, he will uh, fall prone. Mm-hmm. And Checks out. Any creature that enters the area or ends its turn there must also succeed on a dex saving throw or fall prone. So if he is, if he doesn't exit the ten foot square grease patch, um, he'll not be able to stand up. Yep, he is. He is on the ground, sort of slowly <laughs> sliding back in the pit because everything's sort of sloped towards these things, um, and he's sort of clawing at the edges. Um, Athene, you hear Volo yelling, You, sir, are a liar and a slanderer, and the world will know how much of a terrible person you are and how much you deserve to be here. Um, Orion blinks to me, and we start to, like, make sure he gets going with us, like, you know, helps All assist right. me in pulling him away. Yeah, he's got some of this ex- excrement on him where they had this little exchange. Uh, he smells pretty awful. Um, but you can pull him away, and he, he sort of stops fighting you at first when, when the guy was right there in his his range. He, he seemed to really be wanting to uh, land a few punches on him, but um, he, he sort of lets you carry him further away at that point. Um, what are y'all doing with Do and are there get us, go ahead you go ahead just do we get a sense that they're following us as we're taking him away so are you like y'all can start heading towards the bridge um if you want uh, is that sort of what you are planning to do um as you as you move the um the devils seem to descend on him um, and start stabbing him over and over with these forks. You hear him sort of crying out in pain as his body is like slowly sliding back into this pit of excrement. Uh, and they're they're sort of laughing and jumping up. One of the spine devils is like sort of got their back to the pool and is like watching y'all and sort of seeing like what y'all are doing. It's not following you, but it's sort of seeing if like you're coming to stop them or not. Uh, do you? No, we have to. We have a purpose and a mission, and we need to stay on that. Hmm. Athene thinks about it, and then uh, Orion bites her, and then just, <laughs> and then uh, uh, she keeps going towards the bridge. All right, um, you cross. You're able to cross the bridge. You see more devils on the other side. They seem to be doing the same thing stabbing um through some of these uh poor like shades as they're trying to like crawl out of these pools um and you see a lot of similar things each one of these little pits as you continue to cross these bridges have people who are being tortured in various ways um throughout each of them um for the a lot of them don't have devils in the same sense they're the people are actually stuck down in the pit there's no way for them to crawl out and something's going on down there like they're dragging giant stones or their bodies have been deformed in some sort of magical means that looks quite painful for them um you do eventually reach a pit that is full of what appears to be a tar and surrounding this pit is a large host of flying devils. Um, these appear to be quite large. Um, they are all carrying, they have long claws on their feet and on their hands, um, very large horns on their heads, and are carrying uh, various long polearm style um, implements, uh, most of them jagged and, and um, cut into these sort of wicked looking patterns uh, and they are using them to sort of push down and and stab people into this tar as anyone tries to like crawl their way out you can tell that the people are it's stuffed in here like people are piled upon themselves within this place Um, and so some people are just sort of pushed up by the nature of other people um, and the as soon as someone surfaces, these devils sort of fly over. They very quick and very maneuverable, um, and they immediately begin like stabbing that person until they can sort of worm their way back underneath, which usually pushes somebody else up. 
um, as you approach and you are noticed, um, a, a group of them fly over to you. Um, and there, there appears to be one that's a good deal larger than the rest and sort of hovers in front of you um, and speaks in a very deep voice and says, who are you living who walk down here in the Nine Hills? I'm waiting for a theme to introduce. Hello, I am... Uh, isn't that the pattern? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, good friends. My name is Athene Weatherby, protector of the stars. I am here assisting on a contract. These fellow, uh, this fellow here, Volo, um, to the exit to the Nine Hells. We'll be out of your hair in just but a moment. It says, who has sent you here? By what right do you trespass on our property? Uh, Ogma. Ogma has sent us. He, he, he seems to know this name mm -hmm. um, as you speak and says, well... If it has been ordained on high, I suppose you have right of passage. We will allow you to go, but I must warn you, one of the bridges ahead is out. We will help you across. I will send an escort with you. Hmm. Uh, that is very kind of you. Uh, can I get an insight on... Yeah, Yeah. go for it. Yeah, like, we all want to insight. Insight check. <laughs> Ooh. Not, again, not uh, awful for me, which is a 13. 20, 27 for Reyna. I have zoomed in. No, he's, he's lying. He's, he's definitely lying? intending, yeah. he's definitely intending yeah, to yeah. Um, betray you at some point. You don't know what he tends to do, but he's not genuinely just trying to help you. Um, yeah. Uh, Raina says, well, as much as you probably want us out of your hair, I'm not sure that we can trust you to help us across a damaged bridge? Oh. Seems a convenient we place are. to drop travelers you are concerned about. This is all we are right. incredibly capable. He incredibly capable. Adventures. He says, I, I assure you the path is treacherous and no stranger to this land could pass it. I insist I will send a host with you, and I'll hear nothing else of it. Do you want me, do you want me to try suggestion again? <laughs> Didn't work last time. Um, well, so I will say, um, Hibernus, you asked about the devils that you've recognized previously. You do think these are quite powerful devils, and there are a lot of them. Like, even just surrounding you, much less the others that are flying around, is a significant host. I will address this devil in Abyssal. No, Infernal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Infernal is oh. the devil link, right? Yep. Yeah. It is. I will address this devil in Infernal. I also speak, I also speak uh, Infernal, yeah. so I hear you. I, it's almost like we prepared and for this. We, yeah. It's like we took it on purpose. I speak Celestial and Primordial. So. I speak Abyssal and Infernal both. So I, one of them comes out of my mouth. And uh, we would be grateful for any escort that you would provide. Um, we would ask that they observe only unless we request assistance. He goes, uh, sure, that is an acceptable terms. Then let us be on our way. Yes. And he, he makes a gesture, and about three dozen of these creatures sort of start flying with y'all as y'all start walking along. As you're as you're walking, um, uh, Volo leans over to you, Habernus, and he says, "Old chum, I believe these devils mean to do us harm." Um, I assume he's just speaking. Yeah, he's just sort of whispering it to you. <laughs> you are likely correct. Be on your That's guard. Concerned. I will. You can rely on Bolothamp. This is good to know, because your skills may become... Excellent, excellent. He's, he seemed, he's, he's like 
you can tell he's still drawing and taking notes <laughs> despite the, despite what's going on but yeah y'all start y'all continue to follow the map um and um you follow around up ahead you do see as you are crossing you cross another two bridges there there is a bridge that's out that surrounds this next pit and it does appear to be the last of the pits before um, there's sort of a drop off and you can tell this sort of area changes How as it has changed before. <clears throat> it's about 150 feet. All of these are sort of thick. The, the, bridge the bridge goes part it goes gone? part of the way on each side, but in the center it appears to have collapsed. Yeah, how, how much of a gap has collapsed? Um, the part that's collapsed from end to end, if you follow out the part that's still, because it's not like a perfect cut, um, the shortest distance would probably be around like 25 feet. Okay, and what is the bridge made out of? Um, the bridge appears to be made out of some sort of strange stone you don't recognize this stone as being anything that you've encountered on the prime material plane and what's um, in the it, pit um for this pit i think it's molten gold i'm not I real and i can get us 10 feet closer um are we walking to are we walking to the edge of where the bridge ends um, I don't know. Are you? Is that, you tell me. <laughs> I'm asking our crew. Oh, okay. uh, not right away. I don't want to get shoved in from behind by these. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> three dozen. Absolutely fair. Um, can I cast divine sense and know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within sixty feet that is not behind total cover? Yeah, there. Is there are... anyone that I? Is there anything that I don't know? Like you know, like obviously we see the three dozen. Are there others yeah. around? Uh, no. I mean, there are, so you're sort of traveling, and they, they cover the whole circle, so there's still some sort of variously, but the only this three dozen are the ones that are actually following you. The rest have gone back to about, about their business of, like, um, stabbing uh, and trying to, to poke at these people who are um, trying to escape these various pits and stuff. They seem to be enjoying you themselves know, a lot. A Tuesday. You know, a regular Tuesday <laughs> in the Nine Hells. Are they, and yeah. they're staying like how close to us mostly? They're, they're hovering above you at a probably around like 40 feet. Okay. Interesting. Um, and we, have we gone over the other two bridges? We're just on the third. Yep. If we're, uh, I could make a rope bridge to get us across. Hmm. I'm sure Voyage could assist with that as well. I mean, if we've got... I, I'm not sure what I have. Do you have ropes? I have the rope <clears throat> from the... I have 50 feet of rope, specifically. I also have 50 feet yeah, of rope. So I will cast Fabricate and turn their ropes into a bridge that covers the gap. Um, okay. You fabricate their ropes into a bridge that covers the gap. Um, you definitely can tell the, the ones that are floating around you are watching very closely. I... Orion. Orion, my dear. I, you know, it's really... this is I, I really appreciate your support. I think you should potentially test to make sure that this is all very... Oh, no. <laughs> Don't worry, he can come back. The, the, the Orion doesn't die. It's wonderful about him. He's he's and he's just making the most like face. Uh, but you know, <laughs> um, Orion, dear, just take just take a little a little saunter across the bridge and let us know how it goes for you. You can just write back to me in my brain. You know how to do this. You're very good at this. Um, okay. And Orion so you're sending, starts I'm sending, so you're Orion sending Orion across, Orion across the bridge. So you send Orion across the bridge. He is able to cross it. There's no real trouble with that. The bridge seems sturdy enough to carry him. You do notice as he starts, the demons sort of, the devils sort of close in a little bit. They will close their gap, and they're definitely hovering a little bit closer to y'all now than they were. I will address them in mm -hmm. Infernal, in Infernal mm -hmm. and say, 
You will recall our agreement that you are to refrain from interfering unless we request assistance. Um, one of them calls back and says, yeah, sure, our agreement. Uh, Bolo, can you write that down for them? In case they forget. <laughs> I know things can be tricky. Um, <laughs> he goes, uh, I, I suppose I could, I could draw up some sort of contract. And yes. they're like, you see a lot of their heads sort of like contract. Did you say contract? No, no, no. <laughs> I don't Wait, think Bolo writes it. He knows what he's writing. They're not writing it, right? But they can twist words. I have a feeling. Oh well, you know, I just have a sense. Um, and and Volo starts writing something out, and and they start getting closer, and they seem to be watching him pretty closely. Um, and he's he's writing something out here. Um. And uh, he he writes out a nice page or so, and he says uh. Here you go, sir. Uh, here's uh, here's the contract for your review. They must sign with my quill. Um, they go, yeah, yeah. Hold on, we'll need to review this. See if it's something we can agree to. <laughs> and as one of them takes it, it starts like looking over it, and you see he makes a little magical pen, and he starts like marking things out, and he goes, can't agree to that. That's not the wording that we would have to use. And the others are crowding around them, and they're sort of like pointing over his shoulder. Should we? Run and he, they're now? like, "Hey, run, run, like, what run. <laughs> Yeah, let's try it. Yeah, sure. Okay, so y'all run. <laughs> I'm not. I am not going to run. run. Uh, I will, in fact, it's below? it's 25 feet between the two things. Uh, it is 25 feet between. The yeah, two I'll things, misty yeah. step between the two. Okay, so you misty step over. Um, no, I'm gonna grab hold of Volo. We're not leaving grab him. Volo, pull him. They have the contract. Yeah. Um. So they seem distracted. We should leverage this. Yeah. I'll. I'll, I'll I will only misty step after the others have crossed, though. I'll. I'll wait till everybody else is gone. <laughs> so, as y'all run across uh, this, oh, calm down. That's <laughs> y'all looking at the dice rolls. You don't know what they're doing. Um, as y'all are are, just make a bolt for it. Um, they are seem too distracted at the moment. Uh, they don't really seem to notice that y'all like taken off. As another one's like, "No, you should really word it this way." And they're like, got their own pen and they're like trying to write over the shoulder of another one. Um, and it isn't until y'all have sort of gotten to the other edge of the bridge that one of them's like, "Hey, they're just they're running away," <laughs> and they they start like, coming one of them just throws the paper or the contract. But we away. have a head start. We have a head start. Um, you do have a head start. Um, um, and on the other side, it is, it is a very short distance before you get to um, a steep slope um, that starts going down. Do you continue running or do you stop when you get to the edge? Did the map indicate that this would be the way to go? Or how do we, would we need to stop and look at the map again? Uh, the map, last time y'all checked, indicated that you cross the bridge and you go down. Um, you don't know what's sort of down and beyond this. I mean, very likely it's worse than what's behind us, but maybe not. <laughs> what's the word? You got quick quick decision because you got things go. chasing I think we would go. I think we'd we go. We're go. being followed by three dozen <laughs> devils. Yeah. That's yeah. so many. <laughs> That's not a fight. I mean, I, so have, I have something... But y'all, Y'all go down over this edge. It is a steep embankment. You are sort of half running half tumbling um ahead of you um what you see um is if you're kind of like those of you you can make a dexterity check to see if you take any damage as you're sort of tumbling down this embankment um or dexterity saving throw oh, um okay. then not that. you can see behind you that the devils reach the edge where y'all sort of went over the edge and they all stop and they're yelling at you but they are not like flying down in your, like, into hear, this area. Can we hear what they're yelling? Yeah, like, come a lot of cursing, a lot of insults. Um, Very rude. A lot of them are telling you to come back here. Uh, some of them are laughing and like, yeah, you're gonna regret that. Blah blah blah. Um, what you see ahead of you is there is a cliff that you can't see down, and it just seems to go off into darkness. 
and in the path that you're rolling down sort of close enough that you could either dodge it or sort of force yourself into that direction is a hole. Um, Voyage, you have the map. If you want to try to read it while you're sort of running down the side of the hill here, you can give me an intelligence check. I will do that. Uh, intelligence check. Let's it is a little difficult. This is a rough situation that you're trying to read a map in. Just general intelligence? Yeah. Okay. I, I'd probably take investigation. Um, okay, my investigation is a plus seven, but the bra was a two, so that's a nine if we're doing investigation. So that's a nine? Reroll that. Um, <laughs> if anyone, you know, if there's any way anyone could help. Yeah, is there any way we could give him, like, if I could, like, steady him while he's trying to read? Um, um, can... Yeah, go for what, You got an idea? My manifest mind. The, my awakened spellbook's mind that's hovering around, can I have it observe the map you, and try and you can. read it that way? Mm -hmm. Sure. And the mind is floating, so that's convenient for it. 26. Um, uh, that's, that's much better. <laughs> yeah, Voyage, all you make out is make a leap. Um, your awakened mind sees that the, the message on the map is make a leap into the hole, but do not go over the cliff. The hole, to the hole, <laughs> to the hole. All right, jump in. We're going for it. So y'all direct yourselves towards this hole as opposed to falling over the cliff. Um, you are able to sort of um, maneuver as you are as you are tumbling. You all are able to end up going down in there. It's not that far out of the way from where you went down. Um, and from here, you start sliding. Um, the rock sort of starts to become smooth, and you quickly realize it's not actually rock anymore. It's ice. And you slide down through here, and you come out, which actually ends up being kind of fun for everybody. Uh, basically like a big slide, Ooh. and you come out onto a, um, well, sort of, it's a, it's a cave that has a rocky ice, um, solid platform and you notice that there are heads sticking up out of the ice and you all sort of glide your own distance depending on weight and um, aerodynamicness I guess and come to a stop on this ice oh well, the temperature here is much better it is quite cool Actually, a little chilly. There's quite a cold wind. A little chilly. <laughs> I'm going to use another divine sense to see within 60 feet of us any celestial fiend or undead. Uh, only celestial you notice in 60 feet of you is your dog. Hmm. And there's no... Good Orion. No, <laughs> all right. There does not appear to be any fiends or undead. Hmm. I'm going to check the map to be sure I can still read now that I'm not running downhill. <laughs> you can. Uh, Let's get a move the on. The map now says, follow the path of ice to its destination. Where the water tumbles from this world, you will find the path to the astral sea. Mm. Okay. Let's do that then. Yeah. The water tumbles from this world. Okay. Waterfalls are pretty. I do like a good waterfall. This one may be frozen, just so you hmm. know. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Follows scribbling um, pretty heavily in his book. Um, does it, anyone want to give me a survival check? I can do that. <laughs> yes, yeah. I would love to give you a I'll give you a survival, survival check. check. Or I'll, um, I'll give the support to Raynell. I'll help, help action, oh, okay. help action. Okay, uh, well, that was a 22. Off to a Mine good start. Be a and a 24. a 24 better start <laughs> very good and it's good that you rolled well because this is a difficult thing to notice the ice just seems like a lake of ice but there is sort of deep underneath of it you can tell where the ice isn't quite as frozen as it is on the surface because this ice does appear to have been frozen from the top down um mm -hmm. deep down there there's likely still water that's running 
And okay. as you stare like far as deep down into it as you can, you notice there does appear to be a path that it's flowing in the direction of. Okay. Um, so that's what I would point yeah. out. There is a path underneath here. As you're walking, uh, Volo accidentally kicks one of the heads. Uh, and the head... This person. Uh, Volo, hands and arms <laughs> inside the path. He, the head looks up. <laughs> it, they seem to have been completely catatonic but after being kicked in the face this head looks up and is like ow so rude i'm already being tortured and and looks up and says um uh, volo it's about time you showed up we've been waiting for you down here and and volo kicks it again uh and and is like oh i'm sorry that was an accident <laughs> Volo, uh, another time, she's Raina's gonna kind of put a, a an arm around his shoulder and keep him, try to keep him moving. He goes. You can come back here on your own time and kick everyone you would like. He, we have a job. As you as you got your arm around uh, Volo and you're walking with him, he says, "That appeared to be Raylan Warsythe, a most uh, dubious person. Can't trust anything they say." Can I history check that name? We'll see if I know. <laughs> sure. I want to know. <laughs> Let's see. That would be uh, 21. I got it. 22. Uh, 21, 22. Those are both good. Um, Raylan Warsythe was supposedly a general that betrayed their kingdom uh, and as part of a coup. Um, and so you sort of know the story, but it was a little far off. Um, and more details than that you you sort of know a tale about it um that they okay. ultimately were rewarded with a high ranking position in this like new government um that was in a pretty cushy position but the coup ended up in the long term failing and they they ended up put to death for their betrayal volo do i want to even know why you are acquainted i I I write stories. There's quite a quite a story behind that, and you can find it in Volo's Guide to Koromir. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Available well, from let's work on from Volo's all, Guide to Getting all Out of reputable hell. booksellers in Waterdeep. Twenty four ninety nine. Right. Um, let's work on Volo's Guide to Getting Out of Hell. <laughs> oh, you'd have to take up the matter of discounts with my publisher. I I don't control discounts, unfortunately. Um, I yeah, y'all follow. Discounts were back behind us a ways in dis. Mm. Mm. There's only one of them. That's the count. There's one dis. <laughs> <laughs> I think there were a lot of disses being handed out. That count in was this. pretty high. Yes, yeah. <laughs> a lot of a lot of puns here. I'm over punned. Um. Yeah, y'all can follow this path with your help. Uh, Volo does not uh, accidentally stumble into any more of these faces, uh, and eventually you actually get to a point where all of the faces are actually underneath the ice, anyways, and they're no longer sticking up above it. Um. <laughs> uh, our producers throwing in jokes now. Uh, <laughs> uh, eventually you get to a point. Um, there is a door. Uh, in the rock facing. Ooh. Does this look like where we were meant to go? It does appear that the path leads to this door and actually goes underneath of it. Right. So, uh, before we open this door, if this is indeed going to dump us in the Astral Sea, what do we know about being dumped into the Astral Sea? Uh, is that a question for me, the DM, or are you throwing that out to the party? That was a question, like, can I roll a history Yeah, check? yeah, you can roll a history uh, Probably be Arcana. I'm trying to figure Arcana out... Arcana for the... Uh, okay. the Astral sea, I can though. do Arcana. Uh, Ignore roll. that roll. Yeah. Oh, I got a natural then. one, but it's an eight. <laughs> I, a, I rolled an eight, so I'm I have so a glad seventeen. I'm these bad ones on Arcana. Uh, you know, the Astral Sea is like a timeless place. You will not like die immediately once you get there. Um, if you can move within the Astral Sea, but it takes an amount of will versus just sort of standard movement. There are a number of hazards that float around. Um, including things like Githyanki and, and other creatures that permanently inhabit the astral plane, but chances are you wouldn't just come out where one of them is because it's an infinite place. 
chances. chances. No, I was more concerned about like a like, one on a D20 chance. <laughs> like a one out of 20 chance. Yeah, something like that. Uh, <laughs> I just don't want to make sure. I want to make sure we don't step through this door and then all like shoot off in a different direction and not. I don't want anyone getting left behind. No, unless you actively move yourself, you'll have no real inertia. There you go. Folo, do not, I repeat, do not actively move away from us when we get where we're going. And he's like, uh-huh. He's still, like, he's, like, jotting down, like, a lot of back notes from things that have been happening and he didn't have time to take notes. Anyone else so. have any I was going to say, can we tie, tie to someone? <laughs> surreptitiously tie him to someone else? So I used... Athene and Raina's My rope. rope. Uh, I do have a bed roll. I think we could we could manage something with that. <laughs> and we try and use a sheet basically to tie tie oh, him to. I, I mean, if you want the sheet to be something different, I can I can uh, use fabricate to turn it into We're, some sort of restraint. Make it a little. <laughs> He says, making a little volo. Good no, chums. It's more like, I, ass- I assure you, this is unnecessary. It's basically like a human leash. I assure leash. you, it is. It's like one of those baby yeah. leashes, like yeah. you know. <laughs> it's it's a a little overkill to use this spell, but I will do it. I will cast fabricate, no, don't. and that bedroll yeah. is now like a, a, a child leash. <laughs> for Volo, a Volo. For leash. Volo, it's a cute little. It's a cute little demon back. There. Yeah, it should be yeah demon themed for sure. He's like, um, uh, I assure you this is unnecessary, but um, we let us go. We merely wish to ensure your safety. He goes, yeah. I do appreciate that, friends. And I do hope that after all of this, I can call you friends. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Orion Cricket. growls. Orion growls. <laughs> It would be well, let's my just pleasure work on getting if you, you home. would come and visit me after this. Uh, he goes. I can show you where I where I work. There are many written items there, and your company would be welcome. Right. Should we go <clears throat> through the door? Uh, if, if you don't stop <laughs> me, I would I would continue talking. I'm trying to. <laughs> <jump>. <laughs> let's go through well, the he door. Jumps on Orion and kicks open the door. Uh, you just oh. kicking open the door. Yeah. On the other side of the door uh, is an immaculately furnished room. <laughs> That's not um, <laughs> on the walls, there are a number of strange metallic contraptions that seem intent on their grinding. They have spikes and wheels that are pressed tightly against each other. And there are, you can tell, people in them. Um, they are sort of periodically they'll let out a little scream or something as they are being uh, essentially ground up uh, in these machines. At the far end of the room, there is a rather immaculate looking devil um, who is sitting in a chair that is looks quite relaxing. It's, it's reclined a little bit. Um, his feet are in a little bucket that is full of ice water. Um, and he seems to be resting his feet while another smaller devil is sort of pouring some more ice into it um and he leans forward um as you open the door kicking the kicking the door in and he says oh finally you're here excellent should we begin the negotiations i think um, really thrown off because she thought she was jumping into the astral sea so she's like kind of like onward sword out ready to go or spirit uh, Hibernos, I think from the knowledge that you've expressed up until this point, I think it's fair to say you know that this is Asmodeus. He is the Lord of Hell. Um, And you have wandered your way into some sort of abode of his. (laughs) Brana looks back around the other side of the door. Looks back in. This is not the Come in, come in. There's a draft out there. It is much warmer in this room as well, um, and you can see there's actually a little a little creek of a like a little blood creek essentially that runs through this place, um, past him and into a wall where there's a door behind him. And he says, "Volo, old friend, I think uh, we should we should begin talking." And Volo old goes, I, "Volo goes, oh, I no. I don't know you, sir." This is Lord Asmodeus. You should pay respect. <sighs> 
I'm sure you do, Volo. Uh, Volo's like, <laughs> certainly. he starts like writing and jotting down, and he's, he's like, Lord, like Asmodeus, and he's like writing down a description really fast, and he's like, has a water bath for his feet, um, and is taking these notes, and he goes, there'll be time for all of that later. I, I think um, you've traveled a long way, and you should rest. But more importantly, Volo, what is it that I can offer you? Voyage, voyage. What does the Mm-mm. map say? Voyage. What does the What does the map say? <laughs> I look down at it. Uh, the maps. The map still says what it said before. Follow the path of the ice to its destination, yeah. or the water tumbles from this world. You will find the path to the astral sea. Mm. Is there the, the is water that we were right following? Now. Yeah. Huh. What was the question? It says the, the water, the path we were following before, the water, did it lead through this door? It did. Okay. Is it, do I see running water somewhere in this? Yeah, yeah. You're there's about a, like blood? a little, or just running There's blood? a little, a little well, there's the creek of blood that runs through here. Yeah. And does it, is there an end to it? Like it goes out, goes out another doorway or? Yeah, there's a, there's yeah, another door, door behind, behind him. him. Gotcha. And Volo, Volo steps forward and says, um, would you be available for an interview? I have a number of questions that I would like to ask. Um, and uh, as he's walking forward, that other little devil brings out a little chair and like puts it out in the room across from him. Um, and and he, he, as Buddy just goes, I didn't know you would be, you would be bringing friends. Um, and he gestures at the devil and says, bring them some chairs as well. Um, and says, what is it that you truly want, Volo? And Volo, like, pauses, and he goes, well, I didn't know I was going to be in- interviewed for all of this. I don't think I'm ready. He sort of Volo, s- if, seems... if you would care to have this interview recorded, I would be happy to do so. He goes, Before we get to interviews being recorded... <clears throat> We are here because Volo's presence is requested elsewhere. He goes... Should not question one be, can this happen at a future date? He goes, <laughs> I would rather it happen now. It seems to have been a long trek to get him down here, and as you know, it's quite dangerous in the Nine Hills. Yes, and it is our task to get him out because he is required elsewhere. And he, he says, For now. there will be time. <laughs> he, he can go elsewhere. Uh, while we're at it, for all of you, is there anything you truly desire? There are little chairs being brought out for each of you. Nope. I guess I kind of say <laughs> I've been doing it this whole time. I think I'm okay. There is one thing. But but please, oh, no. please address Volo's concerns first. Um, Volo's like, well, I have thought that my my work and my attempts to document all of the all of the realms and all of Faerun could perhaps be extended if my human life were were not quite so short I could continue oh, no. my work <laughs> and Asmodeus goes I see that is something I think we could we could discuss and he goes how long do you think it would take for your work to be complete Bola um, and he says, um, I, I don't know. I never thought about it. There are so many things. I have just started on the, the nine hells. I haven't even got to any of the other planes. I had still wanted to go back into the Underdark for a sequel to my previous book. I mean, it would, could be quite a long time. I, or Voyage puts his hand on, uh, Fuller's shoulder and says uh, just trust me there's no amount of time he goes well I mean perhaps I would I wouldn't be able to get everything I wanted done but but imagine the wealth of knowledge that I could bring into this world if I were to live a thousand years and at what cost Volo Um, and he says I don't I don't know I imagine that the Lord of the Hells is not going to give you this for nothing. He says, I can give you a thousand years. Although you have met your friends. 
here in the hells. You have seen the eternal existence of the people who have found their way here at the end of their lives. Do you imagine that if you are granted this boon, you will not end up here when it is all done? Uh, suffering one of those same For much fate. longer than a thousand years. He immediately turns to Asmodeus, sort of like, what do you have to say about that? And he goes, <clears throat> Volo, 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 please understand something. The people that you have seen have made their way here of their own mistakes and follies. Not because they have made a deal for me. If you so desire, we can negotiate your situation in the afterlife. It is not necessary that you suffer such terrible pains as those who you have met during your time here. And I will add, isn't it better to know what your circumstances will be upon your death and know that they will be moderately comfortable rather than the unknown and uncertainty? think that all of you could learn from the unknown, Volo. And most of us know that you don't necessarily just need more time. You just need a deadline and you'll work harder and write more knowing that your human lifespan is what you have available to you. Do you consider, Volo, that all of these people are being punished for the deeds of a single lifetime? And consider how much worse it might be for what seem normal deeds over a thousand years. And Raina leans down on the heels of that and says, Volo, moderately comfortable? Nothing about you says moderate. <laughs> Ask him what it means. He goes, I, I do enjoy a, a little bit of extravagance, he says. He straightens his ass on. And he says, mm -hmm. and I, I am always in difficulty finding motivation to write. And he seems to be pondering it. And Asmodeus sort of shoots an eye at the, at the rest of you. And he says, well, Volo, ponder your situation for a moment. I, I did want to go back to... Tavernos here, you suggested that you had something you were truly interested in. What might Indeed, that be? There is one question that I have sought an answer to oh, for yeah. my entire <laughs> life. And, what and I be? could be persuaded to... I, I doubt that you could actually answer it, though. Hmm. I think I can find the answer to most knowledge you'll find. What's the question? Why is there evil in the world? Oh, I very well know the answer to that. I have yet to find a satisfactory answer. Yet to find a satisfactory answer. Well, I feel confident I can give you what you want. And what would it cost me? Your soul. As that all is an valuable item, things. That is an mm. item that is quite precious to me. It is. Y'all find that it's quite precious to most creatures. That is why those things that you truly value can only truly be exchanged for your soul. Let's have this conversation at another time. I think <laughs> now we, I need talk to, to people we have things. a deadline. We have a contract. We must get out of here. This is he, all shenanigans. I says, don't even. I am Athene Weatherby, protector of the he stars. He says, quiet. And you feel yourself compelled to stop talking. He says, Agma can wait. There are negotiations happening here. If you would like to negotiate... For whatever it is you desire so much at the moment, we can do so. At the moment, I'm speaking to Hibernos. You have said the word that has broken your own hold over the situation. 
Agma is a deity of knowledge. And my service to him provides a more appealing route to the answer that I seek. I think you'll find that Agma is more interested in the pursuit than the actual obtainment of answers. If you wish to be in pursuit of the answer that you seek for the rest of your existence only to find yourself unfulfilled upon your death, then by all means, follow Agma. There are some who say that the journey is more important than the destination. There are some who say that. Are you one of them? At this point, I don't know. But I think I'm willing to discover. And if I do not find that I prefer the journey to the destination, I know where to find. If you ever wish to take this conversation up again, you have only but to call me. Thank you, my lord. And he turns back to Volo and he says, but I think we were also curious about your feelings. Uh, how will it be, Volo? Would you like to have a longer life? And Volo's... Uh, Raina says again, ask him what moderate comfort is, Volo. Volo's <laughs> like, uh, yeah, what's moderate comfort mean? And Asmodeus says, you know, life free from torture, one of um, existence. You can continue to exist as you are. You will find a home here in the Nine Hells. There are many places that exist. I'm surely one of them will be to your liking. You may take up residence in Dis. You could continue your search of knowledge. I know that your time here was brief. These planes are infinite, and no matter how much time you spend here, there will always be things you never see. So why not take up an exploration of this place in the afterlife once you are done? Well, I was like, it is hard to explore infinite planes. Hmm. He goes, would you get exclusive rights to my books? <laughs> <laughs> Ask him what his cut is off, oh the, my God. off the, pro the net profit. <laughs> he says, I assure you, your books are your own. He's like, hmm. Are your profits your own? <laughs> and he says... Raina's instigating. Just Raina's just instigating. <laughs> yep. He seems he seems a little lost in thought at the moment. Bolo, do you want to live so long that you hate writing? Oh. And he goes, "Good sir, voyage. Good chum. I assure you, Ooh. all great writers already hate writing." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Bolo, ultimately, this is a choice that only you can make for yourself. Do recall, we were sent here to bring you out of this place, and you have the option to return at a later date. Indeed, you already said that you uh, intended to do so. So why make the decision now? That seems to ring with him, and he says, yeah, I'd, could I get the, the same situation that you offered Hibernos, that I can that I could call on you if I, if I decide I want to continue this conversation? Asmodeus, those of you who are particularly perceptive can see there's a, there's a little bit of a twitch on his face at this, but he says... That would be acceptable if you would like to return to these negotiations. I think I think you will find as you grow older the 
pressure to continue your search of knowledge um, may bring you back to me. And and Volo's like, yeah, I I think I I think I would like that. I think I would like that option. And he looks to you, Habernos, as the person he's sort of bonded with over this, and and <laughs> is like, yeah, we'll make decisions in the future. <laughs> and I he, assure you, Volo, if you choose to seek out Asmodeus again to discuss this deal further, I will. Ha- help you to reach him. He goes, you are a, a great chum, and I appreciate <laughs> your support in these matters. And Asmodeus is just sort of sitting there, and he looks at the rest of you, and he says, any of you, do you have things that you would like? I'm sorry, but I have it already. There's no need. Hmm. That must be a very fulfilling life. Athena is just angrily fuming, just like fuming. She hates everything. <laughs> she hates the door. Fuming. She's just like, just angry. She was silenced when she was talking. She's just, you know, she's having a moment. Not over that. Um, she's just gonna sit there. She, Raina, do you say anything? No, Raina's just sort of staring, looks at him, and then is looking at the door, and then looks at him and just waits. She says, "Well, it seems that." Although none of you will speak it, there is something you wish, and it's the door behind me. You are free to pass through it at any time. I'll not stop you. As he says, you're free to, that, like, Orion, like, gets kicked and, like, the, like a thief just going. <laughs> just going? Yeah. And leaving everybody else behind? <laughs> not quite leaving everybody, but she's, like, looking, but she's, like, on her way immediately. Who's holding, who's holding baby harnessed for a <laughs> Yeah, who's doing baby harness? I assumed it was you. Me? (laughs) Yeah. 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 Oh, sure. Yeah, that I'm also baby harnessing. (laughs) You pull him right 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 out of of his chair. (laughs) He rolls on the ground a few steps as you like drag him across the floor, um, and and start heading for the door. What do the rest of you do? Bolo's like, "Good madam, please allow me to get to my feet." Yep. Gotta get you back so you can start working on this book. My name is Athene Weatherby, and I'm protector of the stars, and that is what I'm doing right now. When and you say that, he goes... Oh, see, Volo, he called you a star. She calls you a star. When you say that, uh, Asmodeus looks at you sort of side, and he says, well, What luck? I am a star. I am the brightest star, the morning star. So you are here to protect me? I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Uh, I will bow and uh, in Infernal just say uh, Lord Asmodeus I thank you for your time I thank you for your offer to both me and to Bolo and I bid you adieu and then I'll head through the door Inferno he replies to you I hope to see you again in the future I'll nod at that all right, you're heading out. Raina, I assume you're heading out. Yeah, yeah. Raina just looks at him, looks back at Asmodeus, and says, "I think I'm one of those who's in it for the challenge," and walks out the door. He goes, <laughs> um, "I think under the right circumstances, I might see you in the future, anyways." <laughs> um, voyage, are you heading out? Yeah, I walk, but then as I'm like next to him, I don't turn to look at him. I just say, um, don't get me wrong, I am happy with my life, but if it turns out this is my home, I will take it from you. Until then. (laughs) (laughs) He he laughs pretty uh, heartily at that and says, um, yes, you are a fascinating one. That was a good scene. Hey, he didn't call you a trash can. (laughs) Um, yeah, y'all have can walk behind him. He sort of leans back so and he see. like cracks his knuckles and um, gestures, and that little devil comes over and puts some more ice in the ice bath. And the last thing you hear as you're opening the door is him going, "My feet are killing me." Um, 
and on the other side of the door I don't uh, assume probably you Athene have opened it uh, there is you see the watch it, 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 open. Open it opens it open. into the room <laughs> <laughs> Dang. S- slam it open uh there is a a little pool of this water like uh, this blood like coming and actually goes into a whirlpool spiral like di- directly down into um a pit uh, and the, that's really all that's in this room it's a it's you come from this room that has like finished walls and is, is a construction of opulence to what is essentially just a hole in some rocks and a whirlpool that goes down. I think we found the drain. I think this is where we go. Onward to the yep. Astral Sea. To adventure. To seek out knowledge wherever we may find it. Am I right, right, colleagues? Am I right? Bola goes, <laughs> indeed, adventure. <laughs> the trash can is with you. <laughs> you are a, a voyage. Do not say that about yourself. You are a wonderful and willfully and beautifully made creature you are a wonderful member of our team you do so many wonderful things we appreciate See, you Berno, she never lost hope <laughs> what will we be without trash cans i don't get it as an insult and also i only have hands what am i supposed to do with all that trash it's a bad insult i'm just going with it <laughs> they are, you are correct it is a, it's a bad she, insult. like Athene doesn't follow any of the logic that you just put out she's just like yes it is a bad insult and uh is it, it jump it in time makes sense to me either but then again none of the in- all right is everybody jumping in nope there is a moment where you are being swept down by this whirlpool of blood. Everybody give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, no. This Wait. is Plus still three. the river sticks. <laughs> Plus is this three fear? to... Uh, what was the question? It is not against fear. Is this again? No. Okay. But you do have... 25 for rape. 23. <laughs> I have 23 a 28. 28. Ooh, three. Three. <laughs> Voyage. Oh, no. no, with the plus six. three. It is it's six. six. It's a six. Six, and I can do another plus three to make it nine, mm. which is still not good. No. But should have cast guidance on somebody, but I didn't know who'd give it. To you. <laughs> when you all emerge into the astral sea, a voyage, um, you seem to have forgotten um, a little bit about yourself. Um, you can decide what that means to you and what things you have lost um those things taken by you by the from you by the river sticks um I but you are ejected <laughs> so it's doubly important <laughs> that you don't yeah. lose anything <laughs> um you are all ejected from this whirlpool out into a beautiful sea above you this this place you know they're not stars but it does appear to be stars almost space like in the night sky um with bright uh, colorful bands um dotting the horizon in all directions um and far in the distance you can see a great and massive tree larger than anything that you have ever even comprehended existing um And as you look around the astral sea floating in this timeless space surrounded by this beauty and a waterfall of blood that drops off into nothingness forever, um, you activate the amulet and are teleported back to the prime material plane. And that is the end of our D&D one shot based on Dante's Inferno. Everybody's Yay. happy as we thought. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, it is. And no, you yeah. did. Ain't nobody, nobody died. Nobody got soul. stuck in hell. No one yeah. lost their soul. As nobody far as we know. Nobody lost their soul yet. Maybe later, but not yet. Nobody died. Nobody got turned That's a to stone. Problem. Y'all handled that Medusa really well. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was quick. The manifest yeah. mind is a lot of fun. I'm very happy with it. It's, yeah. it's basically a wizard's familiar, but it's my book. <laughs> yeah y'all did a y'all did a really great job in general i mean it's not a happy story it is literally a story of people in internal punishment um but i think y'all made it a lot of fun and i appreciate that <laughs> because i was like man i keep picking these bummers of <laughs> <like> <laughs> <death."> <laughs> 
Not, I mean, I think yeah. you have to. Yeah. If you have a cleric and a paladin, there's some righteousness going on as as things <laughs> progress. And I think that helps a little bit. Yeah, I appreciate that it wasn't just Volo trying to make a negotiations with Asmodeus. <laughs> that was fun. I was like, I don't I'm know. A I wizard. Don't know. How could I not? Yeah, that yeah, makes I mean, sense. It's... It absolutely <laughs> makes sense. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a wizard and my actual selected flaw. No, no. The flaw is that I wanted to draw all the demons. Um, my actual selected uh, bond was that I've been searching my whole life for the answer to a certain question. Why is there evil in the world? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, and it was fun. Uh, I was I didn't know what all y'all had like imagined for your character, so I didn't know if any of you would be willing to negotiate or or have talks with Asmodeus. But I was like, sort of hopefully somebody does. Um, yeah. But yeah, well we will we will just we'll dive into Dante's Inferno. I think it it's one that is as a work of literature and discussing it in relation to especially D and D five e, but tabletop role playing in general. Um, is an amazing example. There, there are literal parts of the the world created by Wizards of the Coast that are based on da- Don Dante's Inferno. So, I mean, the nine hells that y'all just went through are literally based on Dante's Inferno. Um, they even share most of the names and and figures show up in, in multiple places and stuff. It is, it is a, a fairly um, a straight one to one shot, which made this both easy and hard uh, to do. So that's been fascinating. But I, I look forward to our discussion on a, on a future roll call. Uh, but before that, there is a roll call coming up next week on Thursday, in which we will be discussing Sherlock Holmes. Um, yes. We've got um, our our GM Kira will be there for that, along Yay. with our players. Some of our players are not. 100%. Some of yeah, our we're, players were getting that finalized. Yeah, we're getting all we'll that get all that finalized. Um, and our next session of the role of play will be on April 6th? April 7th, I believe. 7th. Is the um, someday in the future, that is two weeks from now. Uh, <laughs> on it's Friday. a lie. It's April 9th. I, 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 was, I, was, I, was, like, I, yeah. I was like, I feel like it's not 7. But <laughs> yeah. I don't know why that was in my brain. Um, April 9th. Yeah. And be, so... Uh, April 9th, and it's Isaac Asimov, and I don't remember who his co author is for that. You're going to have to remind me. Robert Silverberg. Robert Silverberg, and it's Nightfall, right? Yes. Yes, so an exciting sci fi romp. And um, Anthony the plan is will be to our. Use, uh, we'll be using the Cypher system for that, and um, it'll be my first time DMing in the Cypher system. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, you don't make it easy on yourself. You never, <laughs> never reuse the system. That's going to become used, like your gig, isn't it? <laughs> I've used the system before. I've played as a player. I've just not DM'd it. Um, mm. But and it's not entirely difficult. Yeah. But we got all that looking forward to. We continue to have um, archival adventures on Wednesdays um, at 2, right? Starts at 2. 30, 2.30. 2.30. 2.30. 2.30 to 2.30. 4.30 on Wednesdays. Yes. Yes. And that's led by Anthony. So if you're interested in stuff from the Virginia Tech archives and, and sort of going through some of this stuff live on air and, and chatting with Anthony, it's a great time. Um, we are, for this session, we're going to be raiding Pixel Circus. Uh, so stick around as we do that. Um, but is there anything anybody wants to say to the, the viewers before we adjourn? Um, I guess kind of just as a note, so my character Voyage didn't doesn't know where he's from to begin with, and he was starting to think maybe this is where he was from, so I think the thing he forgets <laughs> is that he was starting to figure out where he was from. <laughs> That's Ooh. amazing. That is, that is hilarious that that worked out that way. <laughs> mm-hmm. Especially because that was an offhanded comment of me suggesting that it was the city you were from because it was a metal city and you were made of metal. Yeah, nice. <laughs> love it. That's so good. <laughs> well, like I had no idea anyway, so it was just going to be a future investigation if <laughs> existence oh. kept going past this. But yeah, not anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, we can always see. Someone suggested we do the other two books in the Divine Comedy, and I went, I have no clue what those would be. <laughs> but this <laughs> is only this is the good. This one. is the good one. This yeah, this is the good one. Yeah, I like Purgatory a lot. Purgatorio is no. Oh, okay. It's I think it's better than Paradiso, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. We- I like the music based on them more though. So. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah. Uh, I don't know that well, I heard that. I think uh, Hibernos would be happy to come and adventure in either of those. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we will. I will ponder it. I don't know what I would do. I have no clue. So I would have to think about it. Um, probably a trip to the Middle Plains uh, that are part <laughs> of the, the Faerunian or the whole Watsi Will of Me. Cosmos or whatever it's called. Co- Will of... There's some... I don't know, I forget what it is. Some good outer planes that could be paradise. Yeah. Pretty easy. Well, yeah. I mean, so there's the there's the three worlds that are the the. I mean, it would par- yeah. Purgatorio would have to be like the neutral planes, um, yeah. and the Paradisia would probably have to be the the good aligned planes. Um, yeah. Because there's three of those too, so I just have to pick one and be like, this is where you all end up for funsies. <laughs> Volo's lost again. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> not Volo. <laughs> oh. All right, we'll we'll ponder all of that, and y'all, we will definitely let all the viewers know if we decide to return to the Divine Comedy uh, at some point in time in the future. Um, but thank you for showing up, and yes. um, we will see you next time. Sounds good. Have fun at Pixel Circuit. Bye. Yeah.